right, folks, this is a new podcast from the two mics, and I'm going to give you old energy boy, MG, to introduce it. Yeah, we've edited out all the nonsense with Mike Porky Perry, so it might be a bit shorter than usual. Ha, 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 ha. Look at the light! Yeah, look into the light. Which and, light? Uh, look at any light you like. AM time on The Breakfast Show is different to uh, the time here. This is space time. It's right. the middle of the night, if you well, see what I mean. It's still AM, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's still AM, but it's AM, mem, mem, mem. You see what I mean? I don't know. It's earlier than AM. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. We are the two Mikes. He's Mike Parry. I'm Mike Graham. It's time to say a very, very good morning and a welcome uh, to May, uh, I suppose. Uh, well, welcome the first week of May properly uh, to Mr Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr Parry. A uh, very good morning, Mike. Uh, what? Sorry, what do you mean a uh, welcome to May? We well, did the, the rabbit thing last Friday Yeah, I just realised that as I said it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, you've, I've completely forgotten you've, 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 you've completely <laughs> forgot what we were doing before the weekend. I did, yeah, you're right. right. I'm sorry, I've hold my hands up. And comp- I, I, well, it's the first week of May properly, isn't it? Y- yes, but it's not the first day you of May. You said it was the start of summer, right? Out yeah. there, uh, it's absolutely buckety it's, down it, it with is, rain. Is, We're going to get gales at the end of the, w- at the, end of the week. It's so it's summer, it ain't, I'm afraid. Was a strong drink taken over the weekend? There was a little bit of drinking if, going if, on. If your mind is gone and you can't remember what show we did last Friday well, morning, you know, I've, three I've done days so ago. many shows with you that, you know, it yeah, all, it's yeah. all like water yeah, on a duck's back. But yeah. here's a question for you. Right. Great. Uh, enjoyed listening to that um, uh, that trail for our uh, election yes. special, yes. which is coming up, of course, on Thursday night, all the way through the night with the two mics. Of course. Um, however, there's only one thing slightly bothered me about mm. it. One, I didn't know they were doing it, and two, yes. um, they only seem to have your voice on it. Well, I, I think... mean, once again, yeah. you seem to have stitched me up here. No, no, I haven't stitched you up. I was asked, <laughs> I was asked to come in and do it, but oh, I, really? I, I do understand that the husband's a market research inside talks, yeah. and my voice is incredibly attractive <laughs> to the to the human eardrum, right? to the yeah. human eardrum, mm. and yours is uh, resonantly Well, no, they've, said they've used some guy that's obviously trying to sound like me. No, no, no. That's no. what they've done. No, no, that, Ash does that, doesn't he, in the previous show? Yeah. Not, not very successful. Not very successful. Yes, we know. But uh, he's a good chap. He is. And, uh, and all I can say is that, you know, at the end of the day, Mike, just like cream in coffee, yeah. quality will out or rise to the surface. Oh, it rise to the yes, surface, yes, yeah, it doesn't right. go out. No, it doesn't goes go up out, to the no. surface. But anyway... Um, anyway, more importantly, let's talk are. about uh, Bournemouth, because well, amazing, isn't it, that mm. Bournemouth have ended up winning the league instead of Incredible. actually coming second. Incredible. And uh, we'll be talking a bit about that, I'm sure. all the people there today on 6, the front. 6,000 people on the beachfront yesterday. 6,000? More like 60. Well, it looked like somebody said 6,000. No, 60,000 people around. 60,000. Yeah, four times the the major capacity of the yeah, ground turned, right. turned out in Bournemouth yesterday. Don't know whether they're all going to go when they want to go and watch and play football no, next season. You were season. in Bournemouth at the weekend, weren't you? I was in Bournemouth on Sunday. On Sunday? For a family um, Why situation. Why did you stay around for the celebrations on Monday, then? Um, because I have to admit, I was in a little bit of disguise. I had my Peaky Blinders flat cap on right. and I wrapped a scarf around my face because it was well, cold. Well, because, I mean, you must be, you know, the number one most recognisable man in Bournemouth. Well, not, not recognisable, but certainly I'm getting a lot of stick there. And it's not my fault. It's not my fault because I have volunteered to jump off the pier. I said that initially. I was. I am determined to keep my word. But one of the reasons I went to Bournemouth yeah. was to just to check out the pier situation. Oh yeah. And did you manage to do that in yes, disguise? Yes, I did. Yeah. And down. So went, is it a pier that you have to pay to get onto the pier down there, or what is it? It depends what you're doing on the pier. Right. You can walk onto the pier. But there's but, no. There's some piers you have to pay just. Yeah. To walk yeah. Onto. No. 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 There's uh, there's a theatre at the end and all this kind of stuff. It's a very big pier. But there's another pier at Boscombe. That's which the one they, that somebody suggested it might be an yeah, easier one to jump yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, now I haven't inspected the Boscombe Pier right. yet, but the, clearly the signs all over the Bournemouth Pier saying, you know, you you mustn't jump off this pier, and right. you, you know, you put yourselves in danger and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's yeah. against the law and bylaws and all that kind of uh, stuff. So um, I'm not sure what I'm I'm really going to be doing. There's a suggestion that I need to parachute into the ground on the first. I think uh, that's my favourite one. On the first it? game of think, next what season. What do you make of that? Do you think would you be willing to do that? Yeah, I'd do that. Yeah. Do you yeah, think your, your medical advisors would uh, allow that? I think so, probably because. Uh, you know the old ticker is um, is uh, it only works at one third of the efficiency I've heard of yours, that, yeah. of yours. But uh, I'm I'm sure that I. But can... what about altitude and all that? I mean, because obviously you don't be go very at... high when you're jumping in from a, a plane in a parachute. Well, you're a few thousand feet up. Otherwise, yeah. you, would, you, would, you would come down like a stone. I mean, you've yeah. got to be high enough up to let the parachute. You know, because you can't go above ten thousand feet, obviously, because no. you wouldn't want to do that. No. But that's very high up. A fellow who jumped out from a spacecraft was 27 miles up or something, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, Baumgart. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be doing anything like that. I don't think you like would be doing it. Felix. Um, listen, I want to get serious for a moment. Yeah. Just talking about um, heart and health and all that kind yes. of stuff. We have to mention Jimmy Greaves. Yes, of course. It's an absolute um, tragedy. You know, um, Jimmy Greaves has been hit by a... Um, a fairly serious stroke, yeah. and according to some of the newspapers, which you'll read tomorrow morning, is fighting for his life because mm. he's in intensive care in hospital. Yeah. Had a stroke in 2012, he's had a recurrence of it. So, really, our thoughts do go out to him. One of the greatest English footballers of all time. I was lucky enough to see him play. Mm. I heard Jason talking earlier 
Jason Conde, who's um, you know about a decade uh, younger than me, yeah. and and he said, well, I, I never saw. It. Well, I did. I saw him play at. Remember the game actually, Goodison Park in 1967, and he played up front with uh, Alan Gilzine. Right. And um, I'm pretty sure I saw him play when I was yeah, quite young. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. And he was mesmeric, honestly, Jimmy Greaves. Mm. I, I mean, you could never actually say now, well, he should have played in the World Cup final in 1966, because, of course, we won. So uh, we, we, Yeah, but we, he probably should have played more games for England than he did, though, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? I, I'm, I can't remember how his career suddenly ended, with him, uh, and he'd only scored 44 goals for England, because he scored them in a much, much quicker run of games wasn't than, the, wasn't than the Gary story, Lineker or, may, or Wayne Rooney. You may correct me on this. I mm. thought the story was that Alf Ramsey just didn't really get on with him particularly well and didn't really like him. No, I think it was because he was injured for the semi-final and the quarter-final, which they won, I think Alf Alf Ramsey's view was he didn't want to break up a winning team. Yeah. It was always very, very contentious because Roger Hunt, who was the Liverpool player who played in his place, was always perceived as a bit of a sort of cart horse, mm. you know, a sort of a man who didn't have a lot of speed, but he had endeavour. Yeah. Whereas Jimmy Greaves, of course, was supposed to be the silky, skillful, you know, uh, rapid-fire um, uh, footballer that he was. Mm. I, I still remember to this day the mournful look on Jimmy Greaves' face as he sat in the coach that, that approached Wembley. And, and the coaches used to go into those huge doors mm. behind one of the goals at right. Wembley, you know what I mean? These yeah. huge doors used to open and the coach would go up into, actually into the players' tunnel. And I still remember the remorseful look in his face as he was being driven into the stadium because he knew that he wasn't playing. And I'm not sure anybody else did at that time, yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, look, we wish him the, best, the very best of luck, obviously, and hope he, uh, he gets better very soon. Mm, Got to was, keep your fingers was, crossed. He and, was a and, tremendous player. The, I mean, you can still watch some yeah. of the footage of what he used to do. Oh, of course, of course you can. The other thing I've got to say, Mike, and this terribly shocked me, and, and I'm sorry that we're dwelling on bad news, but the death of Rio Ferdinand's wife, yeah. absolutely appalling. I know. Nobody I know knew she was even ill. Well, I don't think she had been ill for very long. I think it was a matter of weeks, actually. Well, w- whatever it was, I mean, you know, if people have sort of commented on uh, Rio Ferdinand's lack of application, um, sorry, not lack of application, lack, lack of um, making his mark at mm. QPR over mm. the last few months, yeah. well, when you've got a crisis like that at home with three little children yeah. about to lose their mother, oh, my God, my heart goes out to him, and yeah. I, I wish him the very best in luck in rebuilding his life. Life, obviously, yeah, and there were some very nice tributes over the weekend yes. at various football matches for uh, mm. uh, for Rio and his family, and, and from other footballers as well. Because mm. when you see yes. things like that happening, you just can't it's imagine terrible. how awful that must be. Well, the, the contrast is so extreme because these are men who have everything. They have adulation, yeah. they have vast wealth, they have stable family lives because they're able to provide for their families and their children. Then when you suddenly discover that your wife's got breast cancer and, and within, you're absolutely right, weeks if not months, mm. she'd, um, she'd passed away. A terrible, terrible shock. And mm. as I say, you know, there for the grace of God, go us all. Sure, absolutely. Mm. Uh, he's Mike Parry, I'm Mike Graham. We are the two Mikes. Uh, lots more coming up. And we are the two Mikes. There will be a podcast, of course, coming out uh, a few hours from mm. now. Uh, and that music can only signify one yes. thing, of course. If only the Pacquiao Mayweather fight had been like some kind of Rocky Balboa uh, episode. Yeah. I think that's kind of what people were expecting. And it just wasn't really, uh, was I'm not sure I was expecting it. I mean, you know, when all the hype had been sifted away and all that sort of stuff, these were two ageing boxers yeah. past their peak. Right. Um, and one of them was injured, as it turns yeah, out. Yeah, well, one of them was injured, standing toe-to-toe with each other in a ring. What do you think was going to happen? I didn't think... I, I predicted on Twitter on in the morning uh, maybe they would take it in the 10th round. I thought that would be right. about it. You know, he just... He, he well, just that was what that guy not, Wayne McCulloch said when we spoke to him, yeah. the, uh, the boxer, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, uh, But then I, I realised after the first round it was going to be a standoff from the two of them. And in a way... It was a bit of a contract on the on the on the public, really. I suppose the public demanded the fight, so the fight came. But I think everybody inside boxing knew it wasn't going to be a huge spectacle. What on earth were you playing at? Um, crawling up and down the <laughs> stairs at home on your knees at at, at, uh, at um, four thirty well, last uh, last slight, um, Sunday slight, morning. Well, I had a slight problem, right? Which was that first of all, I, I, my decision making uh, was not at its best because my original plan. What you intoxicated, the day. presumably? Well, no, no, like, why do you always have to insist that I'm drinking all the time? Well, you make me out to be like some kind of you know um, drunk. maniacal drunk. Yeah, yeah well, you are. We can. You get like that. You get like that. Not at all. I all relax. the stresses and strains are trying to keep up with me during the week. Suddenly build up no, on you I at the weekend. relax a little bit of the weekend. Relax. And, uh, and obviously with the kids and everything, I don't have a drink until the evening. And, yeah. and obviously then Yeah, but your evening dinner, starts at 4pm. No, it doesn't. No, mm, well, after does. the kids go to bed, right? Mm, yeah. And anyway, I watched Match of the Day and I thought, well, what I should do really is uh, get myself mm. a few hours sleep and I'll set the alarm, wake up about mm. 4, 4.30, watch it, yes. right? Unfortunately, there was a problem with Sky for some reason. I don't know what it was, mm. but I couldn't make it work.
work. Mm. I just could not make it work. Well, everybody else I know made it work by clicking on one button. That's what I well, did. Well, for some reason, mine wasn't making well, That's because you were itself. seeing double. No, nothing to do with that. There was something wrong with the signal. You bladdered. There was something wrong with the signal. Anyway, so, and you couldn't, and, and you couldn't actually get around it in any way, shape mm. or form, right? So I thought to myself, well, I know what I'm going to do. At one point, actually, I thought... Maybe I should just drive because I noticed that the sports mm. bar uh, that's opening up in uh, or was opening Canary Wharf yes. was actually showing it. So I could have gone there and watched it, but it was a bit of a long drive, you know, all the yeah. way from uh, from down there. You're talking about so Dave's instead, place. Yeah. So yes. instead, what I decided to do was mm. I said I'll find out on the internet if there's anywhere I can watch it. Now right. I've since discovered that there were apparently people s- streaming it for free, yes. which presumably is illegal. Uh, but I didn't find any of those. What I found was an American website mm. which I could go on. Mm. Um, and by this time, it was about half past twelve, one o'clock. Yeah. And I tried about three or four times. I tried about half an hour to get through their system of putting credit card numbers I in mean, and all of this. I mean, what a fiasco. Well, I mean... I clicked on one button yeah, and it right. immediately came up. Yeah, OK, well, bu- bully for you. Yeah, exactly, you know, well, bully for me. Well, maybe you should have invited me round to your place no, and I watched it no, there. No, I didn't want but you no, there. You didn't want me no, there. No, you were bladdered. No, no it's not obvious. the point. And I'm sure you Did were you completely sober. Did you take to whiskey? Sober. Well, let me tell you the story, right? Right. right. I, was, I was drinking wine, right? Because I got that big shipment of wine in the other yes. week, and it was very nice. Yes. And so I'd gone through a bottle of white. So you feel you'd drink a few bottles um, of it. A bottle mm. of red, and then mm. I'd moved on to the rosé, and I thought, I can't really drink any more. Oh, I see. We had white, we'd had red, and now we're on rosé, weren't yeah. we? Yeah, so I, I see. thought, well, okay. I can't really drink yeah. any more yeah. so, wine. So you weren't bladdered on three bottles not of wine? Particularly, no. No, no, not no, particularly, no. Not particularly, yeah, okay. And, and so I thought, maybe what I'll have is mm. a nice glass of Woodford Reserve, which I got as a present the other day. What's that? Very nice bourbon. You know, a bit like Jack Downs. Oh, I see. Sorry, sorry. So it was white, red, rosé, and then a bottle of whiskey. Well, I didn't drink the whole bottle of whiskey. You know, I had a glass of it with some ice, right? Oh, did you have more than one glass? Well, I might have had a couple, yeah. You had a few glasses. I had a couple. You told me you had well, half a bottle. Well, by the time when I spoke to you on Sunday, well, half a bottle of whiskey. Well, by the time the fight was over, yes. That but, is eight large whiskeys. Well, I haven't told you yet why it took me so long to get it sorted out. Because yeah. eventually I had to mm. ring my sister in America because what you needed was an American credit card. Because yeah. you know when they ask you for a zip code. Yes. And if you put in your. Um, did you manage to remember your sister's number? Yeah, of course I did. And, and on your phone, did you manage your fingers to hit the right buttons well, to get hold of your sister well, in America? On, on most people's phones, it's on a speed dial, actually. And we have a oh, thing right. called FaceTime, actually, right. which means that you yeah. don't have to spend any money. You just mm. talk to each other face-to-face. A lovely chat with her, a lovely chat with my mother, who was yes. there as well, mm. who's now 91, by the way. Wow. And... Uh, and so we sorted it all out, and finally I got it all done. Mm. Um, but it took until about sort of half past three, quarter, four in the morning. Mm. So by then there was no point going to sleep. So unfortunately, no, by the time the not. fight started, yeah. I probably was, you know, a little on the tipsy Bladdered. Side. Not bladdered, no. Tired. Not bladdered. Exhausted. But then, at the last minute, mm. right, as it got into the last final two rounds, yes. it's, it froze. So yes. I was watching on my laptop. And because the house is so big, the signal in some parts of the house is better than others. Right, right yeah. So I this thought, hut that you live in, in the middle of a field down in it's Kent. It's not a hut. No, yeah. it's quite a big house. Right. And that's why the, the Wi-Fi sometimes doesn't mm. work too well. Mm. So in the end, what I thought I would do is take it a bit closer to the upstairs right. router, which is right. sometimes stronger. But I obviously didn't want to go wake everybody up. So I was on the stairs, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and, and if you'd come out of the but bedroom woke, door... But, but you woke the mother of your children Yeah, I up, did, didn't yeah. You? Yes, and, it, and, yeah. and probably it looked worse than it was because I appeared to be lying on the stairs. Yes, on um, your hands and knees. On yeah. my hands and knees, looking yeah. at the laptop, yeah. staring into it. It's, it's, um, sort of, it's, and it was probably... Yeah. Not, so it could have been interpreted as the actions of a man who was completely intoxicated <laughs> on his hands and knees with double vision, Tried with his see, face right up against the screen, trying to see the fight. A, yeah? Watching a frozen screen. Disgraceful. And honestly, supposing your children had gone up in the middle of the night, come out seeing their father in that sort of state... Well, luckily, what they don't so, wake what, up that time. What sort of example is that to me? Well, by this time, the light was coming up, because it was like six, six o'clock, wasn't right. it? Anyway, listen, just to let anyway, you know... Anyway, so I'd, I'd, quite, I'd spent quite a lot of long time in bed on Sunday. All right, well, just to let you know, you didn't even have to pay for it. Listen to this. Pirated live footage of boxing... I didn't pay boxing... for it. My sister paid for it. Well, there you see. You, scr- you scrounged it off your sister. Pirated live footage of boxing's fight of the century was watched by thousands of people of, uh, through two new smartphone apps. Mm. Online streams of last Saturday's clash between Floyd May- 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 Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao yeah, helped many viewers to avoid paying up to $100... That's what it cost you in America. That's what cost your sister. Uh, to watch on pay-per-view television. No, this was 60 bucks. I think she paid. Uh, well, it says here 100 But anyway. But you know, the funny thing was, was yeah. actually what I watched was the Sky feed. Because I saw, um, you know, all the interviews that Sky were doing before. Right. And so okay. I don't know how they got permission to do that. No. Guys. But it says here, Meerkat and Periscope. Mm. Meerkat, I thought, was the, an advertising for an insurance yeah. company. Well, it's, an, it's like, you know, this Periscope thing that started yeah, yeah. up, which a yeah. lot of people have started using. Meerkat is a similar service. Right. Well, Periscope is, is the other one. It says, allow people to stream live footage of the world around them using the camera on their smartphones. Yeah. The apps have been used effectively by citizen and professional journalists... To, <coughs> excuse me, to document live right. news events, 
Yeah, but they've also been used for pirate streaming yeah. of television well, see, I knew dramas. This would remember, I warned that this would happen. Yeah. Because I said the first time somebody mm. starts mm. live streaming a football match that you don't yeah. have, you've paid for or a boxing yes. match, you know, there's going to be all sorts of copyright so, issues. So if we wanted to, now, we get on this Periscope thing, yeah. we just switch some camera on in here, and then our listeners could see us in the studio yeah, they could. the show, could they? Yeah, they could live. They could, we could live stream Well, I don't it. think we should do that. Though, cause no, I don't the, think the, so. the, the minute our millions of listeners see your fat face, mm. that's going to put them off well, without it a shadow might of do. a doubt. It might do. I it's, mean, also... better, it's better to leave the image of just the voice, Mike. Believe no, me. No. Some well, people's, you know, some people are made for, for voice How's that Brad Pitt only. mirror coming along in your Voice house? only, you know what I mean? You know, you have got the face for radio, if ever that corny expression well, applied to anybody, it applies to you. Yeah, but if you go on to Two Whites TV on YouTube, you yeah. can see us working in the studio, which is not live, but it's something that we've done previously. Yes, we've got, I know. We've got the April Fool's prank in there. We've got the uh, yes. uh, the quiz, the other week's quiz. That's true. Uh, and so, mm. in the end, mm. um, actually, that's a, people are very people find that very popular. Yes, well, they find that popular because that's sort of measured and it's uh, disciplined. Well, it's, not, it's just live. Disciplined and contained. The trouble is with uh, with you. You do so many extraordinary things. We have to edit out when we put those clips together. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Not when we're recording it. When we're something by the we're way, doing live. By the way, I'm getting. A bit fed up with the amount of water you bring into the studio for right. shows. There's glasses all over the place. Now, one of these days, <laughs> one of these days, one of these is going to get knocked over. I've never knocked a glass you're, you're over. Gonna, you're going to fuse years. a keyboard. No. You're going to fuse a keyboard. You're going to ruin some equipment. That's the kind of thing you would and do. And frankly, I don't know why you have to drink water all the way through the show. Anyway, if your voice is that bad, you should give up smoking hundred cigarettes to do a day. With my voice. And uh, and and the other uh, thing about you drinking water why all night holding, is why are you holding the microphone like that? Because I'm leaning over towards you to make sure this <laughs> microphone doesn't fall over. I don't know why I'm holding it. Actually, I would be. But amazed, um, actually, in all the years that you've worked at Talk Sport, yeah. if you haven't somehow blown something up... I've never blown anything up. Because you are the least nope. technologically able person nope. I know. But I don't bring all sorts of silly things into the studio. I mean, I've known, over the years, people to bring in a bar of chocolate and yeah. leave it on a keyboard, and it melts and goes into the... Why would it melt? Be- because, because they're hot. Get hot. Because they're hot. No, they, they do. They, they do, do they get, get hot. hot. But of course they get hot. And uh, if they're next to this screen, the screen... Look, feel that there. That throws out heat, right? No, it's so, hardly, so, it's hardly so, hot at no, all. No, no, no. no, no they put it there. No, they do. They Put it, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I I've mean, got experience in these sort of things, right. okay? And and it, and it runs into the keyboard and then it's ruined. You have to throw the keyboard away. Except actually, you could um, put it in the dishwasher. Well, like let's, I said well let's see. Let's see it since you were so critical yeah. of me tonight, yeah, because you, know, you haven't seen me for three days, you decided to just get mm. stuck into me. No. Why, what did you do after the Pacquiao fight was finished? Then after the well, first of all, first of all, mm. in the way I run my disciplined life, oh, yeah. I did not have a drink after lunchtime on Saturday. Didn't you? No. Well, what I, time does lunchtime finish? Seven o'clock. No, lunchtime finishes. Did you at go out for lunch? About what? I did. I did. Did you go to Weatherspoons? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Did you go to the Toby Carvery? No, I didn't. No. Where did you go? Uh, what's it matter? And what's it got to do with oh, you? Oh, because I'm interested in where you went. I went to a nice restaurant in a place called Cheam in Surrey. Did you? Okay. Yes, I did. Yes. Well, yes. So what did you have? What do you mean, what did I have? Well, people are what interested you in your culinary habits. They'd like to know. I mean, all weekend people have been posting I I pictures have. of lean ham, yeah. pictures of tinned food. Yes. You know, there were recreations Fine. of you thinking that pineapple, I had, pineapple cubes in a tin are actually fresh. You know? I had a giant... Um, what are you laughing at? I haven't even told you what I had yet. <laughs> well, you said I'd, you had a giant. No, I had, I, had a, I had a giant Yorkshire pudding <laughs> full of beef and carrots and peas. OK. Mm. Yeah. It's That's great. the sort of thing they do in the north of England, isn't it? Yes, it is. They put yeah. a Yorkshire, yeah. massive Yorkshire so it's pudding. It's very nice. It's, the it's great. It's okay. great. No problem at all. Um, well, that sounds relatively healthy. Exactly. So then I didn't have um, I didn't have anything to eat then after that. You anything to drink, you mean? To drink, I meant to drink, yeah. And after half past one. And what so did you have to drink with this then? Uh, just a... Pint of bitter. One pint, pint of beer. Pint of beer. That's all you had? Yeah, yeah, one or two. One, one or two. two. One or two. Yeah. So, so anyway, I then go home and I discipline myself completely. Mm. I get some work done. I tidy things up. Mm. And I go to bed. At... Have you been out to celebrate? on? Because it was quite a nice day, wasn't it, Saturday? Did you go out in the roof garden? Just to uh, you no, know, but the roof garden the is now completed. No, it's been rebuilt. That, yeah. It's fantastic. No, it's know. great. Well, why you and the housekeeper's yet, coming up next week to uh, redo the gardens and all that kind of stuff. So it's great. Uh, I'm very, very pleased about that. Uh, no, I didn't. What I did then was I um, I went to bed at eight thirty. Eight thirty. Yes, in my disciplined way. And it was like a child. No, 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 no. Well, I didn't get bladdered on a bottle of whiskey and three bottles of wine. Mm. So you know, if that's if that's being adult, then you can stick it, adult mate, and I'll stick to the. Be a child. You, 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 no, no, no I'm not a child. I'm not a child. Disciplined. Nobody goes to bed at eight thirty. I'm disciplined. Ridiculous. So I go at eight thirty. So I get up at uh, three thirty. 
OK, because mm. that's when the uh, the programme started. Yeah. I watched all the uh, star spotting, which was brilliant. Robert yeah. De Niro coming in, yeah. you know, Mike Tyson, mm. you know, all these great uh, people. Oh, um, uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood Clint was there. Eastwood, yeah. Lee Clintwood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, he was there and all that. <laughs> watched all that. And then, the, of course, the fighters came in the ring and all that kind of stuff. And then the minute the fight was over... I decided it was so disappointing. I didn't want to see too many of the interviews afterwards. Right. So I then switched the television off and went back to bed. You went back to bed? Yes. Well, you'd already been in bed for like seven hours. No, no. That would, what time would that be? That would be... It was be... about six, wasn't it? About six, that's yeah. right, yeah. Yes, I know, but I had nothing to do because my newspapers had What about arrived. the ducks? Yeah, I went out and did the ducks, actually, before the fight. Oh, OK. That's why I got up at 3.30. I went and, I went and fed the ducks before the fight. That's not a very good idea, is it? No, Creeping it is, because right I knew I wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't... Yeah, well, I do, because I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it after the fight. That's right, thanks for reminding me. I was then... Uh, had to uh, get up again and shoot off to Bournemouth oh, yeah. where, for a family uh, gathering, mm. you see. And that's when I had to... Uh, so that was Saturday evening? No, that was Sunday morning. Oh, Sunday morning, Sunday yeah. morning. OK. So I had to adopt a bit of disguise. But again, I was very disciplined down in Bournemouth mm. and uh, I returned by... Um, I was back here by 7.30 I'm this morning. I'm amazed that nobody recognised you out and about in Bournemouth, though. Well, I didn't put myself about, seriously. Mm. I didn't make eye contact with anybody in Bournemouth during yeah. the day I was there. So I didn't think it'd be appropriate. But yeah. I did go down and look at the pier. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, excellent. So yeah. are you going to have a look at... I mean, do you think the Boscombe Pier is something worth bothering with? Well... Do you think the flying into the stadium is a better one? I think we'll talk to the council who run Boscombe Pier. Mm. Actually, it's the Bournemouth Council, I've just remembered, yeah. because um, the parade for Bournemouth's um, success was Bournemouth to uh, Boscombe Pier to Bournemouth Pier. Yeah. And by the way, well done to all the people who had um, parades yesterday. Uh, Watford, yeah. uh, Bristol, uh, Bournemouth right. and Celtic. Bristol. And can I just say to our... Sorry, what? No, I was going to say, Bristol, the team that you said should merge with the other Bristol yeah, team. Oh, yeah, they, should. Uh, who of course they also, should. Who are also on the verge of moving up one stage, aren't they? In the, in uh, the, uh, out of the, the Vanarama Conference. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. that's right, in the playoff, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Um, of course they should merge and have one team. Also, I want to say to the Celtic fans, by the way, I didn't mean any uh, disrespect by saying, look, you could see your league title coming some months back. Mm. It's obvious, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. I hope Rangers get back into the Premier League so that there's proper competition again up in Scotland. Well, we shall see. We'll talk some more about that yeah. coming up. He's yeah. Mike Perry, I'm Mike Graham. Uh, winners and losers coming up in the next hour. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The enduring home of football. It's modern radio, only better. And here. D- yeah, I've got one here. I've got one here as well. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Provided by our, uh, our very able uh, telephonic assistant. Yes. Um, what's his name, by the way? Neil. Neil, yeah, Neil, thank you. Um, right, now what I was going to say is, right, 30 minutes after you have a cup of tea, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at your description Why? of him as a telephonic assistant. Well, that's what he is, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's one of many, I suppose you could call yes, him that if you wish. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, a young man making his way in life, put yeah. it that way. Right, now then, uh, 30 minutes after you have a cup of tea, yeah. your brain uh, perks up significantly because it triggers the alpha, the beta and the theta neurons in, mm. your, in your head. Is that because of the caffeine? Yeah, electrodes, electrodes attached to the heads of... What are you laughing... Why are you laughing? <laughs> what, electrodes attached to the yeah, head. Yeah, that's why right. Why would you yeah. want to attach electrodes well, to your head while well, drinking well, tea? No, this is... Because this is a study at Newcastle University. Is it? Go oh, on, Newcastle. Well, you might want to attract some electrodes to John Carver's head. <laughs> yeah, well, see exactly. if that makes anything work better. I think that's great. Take John Carver into the Newcastle University faculty and attach <laughs> some electrodes to his head. You know, I find out what's going on at Newcastle United. <laughs> Give him United. a lot of tea to drink. Yeah, but anyway, it says the latest study research at Newcastle University um, investigate uh, brainwave patterns. Mm. They've got new um, new equipment to investigate brainwave patterns. Oh, yeah. And it establishes the effect that tea has on the various neurological functions. And eight volunteers were asked to drink a cup of tea with green or black leaves, doesn't matter which, right. before having their brain actively measured. Have you ever had green tea? Mm, yeah, probably, but, I mean, I wouldn't bother drinking it, it a bit again. Like mud, really. Yeah, it's just dreadful. Mm. Uh, highly significant increase in the theta waves between 30 minutes and an hour later, says the study published in the Nutritional Neuroscience uh, Journal. Another one of those uh, periodicals that you constantly peruse for stories, right? Yes, that's right, absolutely. Yeah. And guess what? Well, how many cups of tea do you reckon you drink in a day? Six. Six? Probably. Because it's probably not good to drink more than that, is it? Two or three here during this show, yeah. right? Uh, one man, um, uh, before I leave and mm. come in, you yeah. know, stimulate me. Two during the day, probably, when I'm having breakfast. Yeah. So that's about six. But okay. anyway, it says here, previous research, it can now be revealed, has shown that drinking three to four cups of tea a day may cut the chance of having a heart attack. A bit late for me, I'm afraid. Oh, really? The drink can also help prevent type 2 diabetes and slows the progression of the disease once it develops. Antidoxid, uh, antioxidants. Ox- antioxidants. Antioxidants. Contain, uh, what does it say? 
Uh, now, I've been found to halt certain effects of ageing while regularly drinking black tea shows visibly low stress levels. So you need to uh, you need to get onto the tea at the weekends and then you won't have to relieve all your stress I, by I downing probably, bottles of whiskey. I do drink more tea at the weekends than I do actually when I'm in... I tend not to drink tea that much when I'm in London, apart from when I'm in here. Yeah. It says here, white tea yeah. can also help... You've done it again there, haven't you? What? Yeah. Yeah, just move on. You what do you mean? No, I can tell by the tone I'm of your voice. I'm talking everything you no, said. It's just no, like taking things no, quicker than I you do. I can tell by the tone of your voice. You might, instead of saying, yeah, mm. why don't you just say, look, I'm not really interested in anything you've got to say. Let well, me just get what back to what I'm talking about. What do you want me to do? You want me to about. dwell on it? So, oh, explain that to me again, Mike, will you? Yeah. That's a really fascinating yeah, because line. it's called a conversation. Really fascinating because point. Because it's called a conversation. But I had something more important to tell you than really? that. But you've already told me all about the tea. No, no, no. White tea could also help prevent obesity. It was found to lessen the growth of new fat cells. Is it? Well, it's not working for you. No, or you. Fat. Six, yes. You're drinking yeah. six cups of tea a day. Yeah, yeah. And you weigh about yeah. 18 stone. Anyway, listen, I need to talk to you about other things. Um, now, fat people now suffering major... What are you laughing at again? <laughs> what? Because what? of your completely deluded attitude what? What? about yourself. What are you on about? You sit, I mean, you think I was working with George Clooney. What? You Why? Know, the way that you go describe me and then describe yourself. Yeah, well, you know, I've got a certain view on life. Yeah, now then... Um, deluded one. You know, no, no, no. I tell you what, this is all How's about. How's your campaign going, by the way, against the obesity? Well, the campaign Which against obesity is going question. well. How's it going? How well is it? What do you mean it's going well? It's going well. It's well going what's well. happened? Well, I've got to lose a bit of weight in the next two or three weeks. Yeah. Oops, oops. Well, there's your campaign alarm. I have to. Uh, I have to lose. I'm not a bit talking of about your personal campaign against obesity. No, but I'm talking about campaign. campaign. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going for uh, you know one of these sort of oh, check-up yeah. things, yeah, yeah. and uh, I need but to lose a bit of weight. But you see, you can't do it that way. You shouldn't do it because it's not good for you to do it that way. What you should have is a healthy lifestyle, which means that you have a relative kind of maintain the same weight throughout I'm sure the course about of the year. That. If you, it's like cramming for an exam, isn't it? If yeah. you cram loads of information into your head for an exam, you yeah. immediately forget it. I was if never you, very good at that. No, I wasn't particularly either. If you actually lose loads mm. of weight in a short period of time, yes. you'll put it all back on again as soon as you stop uh, you know, lying to yourself. If you read a load of information before you go to sleep, mm. so read the information... Bang your head on the pillow five times, yeah. wake up five hours later, uh-huh. and you wake up with all that information still in the front of your head. Really? Do you know that? No, I don't think yeah, that's true. You see. But anyway, look, this is really serious, this. Overeating, fueling epidemic of killer liver disease. Uh, up to a third of Britons have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in which the liver becomes clogged with fat. It's exactly the same sort of disease as, you, as, as, as is given, induced, to goose liver. What? You know, You know when they fatten up geese for foie gras? Well, for what? <laughs> What's it? Fra- <laughs> fra- <laughs> what are you laughing fra- at again? Fra- fra- <laughs> Sounds like the mating call of a What is it then? Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie okay, gras. Yeah, okay. Foie gras. Foie gras. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and when you um, when you know that they do terrible things to those geese, well, well they stick a funnel down their throat. Oh, it's and terrible! They, and they pack a load of, sort I, I know, of uh, grain I, into the funnel. I, I and think they it's shove disgusting. It down. I must admit, it's disgusting. I find I find it pretty cruel. It's disgusting, and I wouldn't eat uh, foie gras um, for that reason. It's actually very rich. It's probably not very good for you anyway. No, it's probably not. You know I agree. I mean? But um, I do like I do like a sort of pate de campagna though. Oh, I like uh, I like smooth pate, Brussels smooth pate. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, that's what I eat on toast. Do you? Yeah, sometimes when I come in here because it's a light meal. What what day do you buy that then? What do you mean? What day well, do you buy? What colour is it? It's brown. It's brown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what brown days? What uh, day the same day as you buy my potatoes <laughs> and uh, and my oxo cubes. Of course. Right now, um, <laughs> what, what, I don't know why. I don't know what <laughs> your mints, right? Yeah, I'm a mince. Soup. Yeah, I'm a mince. No, 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 mince. I you don't I, buy brown mints. I did. I did buy brown mints for uh, spaghetti bolognese, which I'll cook later in the week. Oh, good for you. Now, um, what I was going to say is, what I was going to say is, um, this is a serious uh, problem now. Is it? Um, here we go. Uh, long associated liver damage with alcoholism, mm. but overeating is now neck and neck with drinking as a case, as well, a cause. Well, I suppose it's, is it something to do with the difficulty of cleansing the, the liver? Yeah. Because if you overload it with alcohol or presumably fatty foods, yes. then it can't clean itself out. Because I was once told, I don't know whether you can tell me whether this is true, yeah. that if you don't drink alcohol for four days, mm-hmm. your liver basically replenishes itself. Uh, I don't think it's as quick as four days, but the liver's the only organ which will fix itself yeah. if you take away the symptoms of, of, of what's damaging it. Right. So the heart can't... Uh, well, the, the condition of my heart, it can't improve itself. No. I need a new no, heart. No, but I think the heart would be, that'd be the same for everyone, though. I mean, their yeah, heart yeah, is, that's is, what is, I mean. But, yeah, well, yeah. But, the, but the liver actually replenishes itself over a it, cycle, it does. It? It, do, it does. The, um, for instance, the, the brain doesn't um, redo itself, neither do the kidneys and all that kind of stuff. Once yeah. they're damaged, they're damaged, and unfortunately you've got to live with it or, or find a way of, uh, of, of coping with mm. it. But with the liver, very, very soon, in my view, you will be able to 
take somebody's liver out that's mm-hmm. badly damaged, right. and if 10% of it works, mm. you can cut away that 10% that works and regrow the whole liver from it. Well, clone it, as it were. Clone it, have a new liver. Yeah. Get a new liver, yeah, oh, definitely. That'd be great, wouldn't it? it? Yeah, well, it will be, but then it'll be, um, for people like you, that will be um, uh, a free people like licence. Yeah, free licence to, to, to spend Saturday night drinking one white, one red, one rosé bottles of wine, followed by a bottle of whiskey. Well, talking I don't about, know how you're still alive. Well, you're talking about a 12-hour period, practically. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry, so you only had that in 12 hours. What do you have for the other 12 hours? Well, I, was, I wasn't drinking for the other 12 hours. Uh, no, you're sleeping, probably. You're no, sleeping off your, your bladderation. No, I wasn't. I was looking after my children. I doubt now, that Let me read much. you this. This is from a computer engineer. Okay. He says, keyboards categorically do not get hot. Never have I experienced this mm. in 20 years. Mm. How on God's earth would you type on a keyboard hot enough to melt chocolate? No, <laughs> don't be silly. Very bloody fast, I guess, he says. You're talking utter tosh for a change of porky. No, I'm not. I'm saying the it's keyboard's true. close to the screen and the screen's warm and the warmth um, um, emanates across the desk and across the keyboard. Mm. I'm telling you, a keyboard keyboard is warm enough to melt chocolate. I'm telling you that. In fact, we can... Uh, well, why we... don't we do an experiment? I was going to say, we'll do an experiment if you want. Buy a of chocolate. Oh, well, I'll bring and, one in tomorrow night. And, and we'll put it on the keyboard. Yeah. And we'll see how long it takes for it to yeah, melt. Yeah, OK. That's fine. You know? That's fine. We'll do that. In fact, we'll, we can we'll get we'll one out of the machine. About, we'll be here for about six months. We've got a machine outside. I'm going to get a bar of chocolate out of the machine for the start of the next hour. OK. And I'll tell you, but, but t- as long as you take responsibility for the damaged keyboard... I will. Yeah, OK. Totally. Right. Because do it on your keyboard, not doing it on my keyboard. Because I know that it's not going to melt. Oh, yeah? Is that what you think? Exactly right. Right. Um, Listen, what's happening is these damaged livers are no longer occurring in patients in their 60s or 70s. Uh They're occurring in patients in their 30s and 40s. How about that? Well, I think also some people have got more damage to their liver because of the the, the sort of intake of illegal drugs. And not just illegal drugs, but legal drugs as well. What makes you think that? Well, because every kind of form of toxin damages your liver. Say, for example, yes. you're on, you've taken an awful lot of aspirin in your life or you've taken mm. loads and loads of, um, mm. I don't know, antidepressants in your life. Yes. Oh, look, here's a bar of chocolate right here. Oh, right, good. So I'll put it on the keyboard, right? Well, we've got to take it out of its wrapping. Why? Well, because otherwise the, the silver foil will protect it from the heat. You think the silver foil will protect it yeah, from the heat? Yeah, Have you ever watched a, a bar of chocolate melt in the sun inside yes. a wrapper? Yes. Does... Why... Why does do, you know? Does it does it does it not actually um, melt itself inside anyway? Well, it might, but the problem is what we're saying is if you I, put this in your car, right? Yes, and you let the sun mm, rays uh, mm, warm the car mm, up, mm. it will melt inside the protective wrapping, as you call it. Yes, it will. Right. right, I'll put this over the I'll put it over the little light, shall I, to see whether that makes it even hotter? Okay. Yep. And you can sit here for about 60 years and it will never no, no, melt. No, 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 no. I was going to say to you about these liver people, right? They're getting the it liver now. people? Yeah, the liver people. They're getting the, they're getting the damage <laughs> in the 30s and their 40s. I haven't told you that, have I? The liver people? Well, you know, these, in Liverpool. No, these liver patients, you fool. There. It's all in the Lancet anyway, and the Lancet's one of the most highly respected you medical journals in the time, world. You've got too much time on your hands. What was no, the, name the other one you were reading out from? What do you mean? That other report that you were that reading. That other report came... That, that other ridiculous medical uh, journal. That, that, that I came mean, from medical journals? It came from the neurological. Yeah, the neurological what? Neurological something or other. Yeah. It was uh, nu- nutritional neuroscience um, <laughs> uh, magazine. Yeah. Nutritional neuroscience. What's wrong with that? Of course I read these things. I read these yeah. things to keep up with life. I read these things because our listeners expect time. me to be ahead of the game here and not, you know, suffering from the aftermath of bladderation yeah. that you uh, you indulge in over the weekend. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it, very worried about your behaviour. Has it started melting yet? Well, it's only, you only <laughs> put it on there 30 seconds ago, you fool. <laughs> this is talk sport. You put it on the wrong bit of the keyboard. No, it's over the light. It's not over the uh, the, the keys. Look at extra time. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry, of course. So we're about to. Uh, I'm about to tweet out a picture of yes. uh, Mr. Parry staring yes. at the chocolate on the keyboard, uh, willing it to uh, to melt. No, I'm not willing it to it melt. I just do. know it will. It won't. It will. No, it won't. Well, I'm just tweeting it. It's highly responsible to put chocolate on a keyboard, but there again, you know, you don't believe what I tell you. Well, I'm willing to uh, to take the flak mm. if, in fact, there's any damage done to any of the equipment. And you'll sure. pay for a new one. Uh, well, of course I will. Exactly. For the, one of these keyboards, I reckon you get down a Brick Lane Market for mm. about fifty p. I mean, well, it's, not the exactly the, it's not exactly the white hot heat of the technological revolution we're talking about, is it? You'll see how white hot heat it is in a minute when that chocolate starts melting. Mm. Now, um, also in my, uh, my reading of my medical journals, OK, yes, right. I need to tell you something else. Now, um, I didn't have any alcohol today whatsoever. Well, congratulations. But First time for everything. Sadly, I had a litre of iron brew. Why? Well, because I wanted it. 
you know, because I like Iron Brew. Do you know they banned Iron Brew from America because uh, the makers of Iron That's Brew right. yeah, refused do. to share the secret recipe? Oh, with, is that right? With the, uh, yeah, and so there the, could have been like the poisons FDA. in it. Which well, or, I don't think it was that. But no. one of the regulations by the yes, FDA, yes, the Food and Drug Administration, is that yeah. you have to be able to tell them at the very least what's yeah. in it. Yeah, and they refused to do it. Yeah, because yeah. nobody knows what's in Iron Brew. No, I, I, I'm not saying that Iron Brew's dangerous. In fact, I love Iron Brew. I like the taste of it. But but another uh, medical revelation. I've been studying these medical journals all over the weekend. Oh yeah. Um, switching from fizzy drinks and hot chocolate to drinking water and unsweetened tea could slash your risk of developing diabetes by a quarter. Why have you been suddenly obsessed with all these health stories? Because I'm going for a checkup soon. To yeah, is this what we're ticker. going to have to put up with then? For well, the no, no, no. I've got to make sure that every part of the body is being given an opportunity to um, to operate properly. Well, right? it's not going to. I mean, listen to this from James, who's tweeted out the two mics. Yeah. He says, "Ultimate irony: Porky talking about tea preventing heart attacks." Yes. Hashtag only a third of his heart works. Well, that's right. It does. Yeah. So it's a bit well, too so, late. Well, so if you'd drunk more tea, do you think you'd have been all right? No, but if I don't drink tea, maybe only a quarter of my heart will work in a few years' time. You see, I'll get weaker and weaker, and then bingo, I'm gone. Mm. Um, is, there a, is there a sort of... Um, hmm? uh, is there a point at which they say, if you've only got, say, an eighth of your heart working, then that's it? Well, some people who were on the same ward as me when I was uh, in hospital, waiting for a heart transplant, had a uh, working capacity of their hearts down to, like, 3 or 4%. Really? Oh, yes. Blimey. And that's, uh, Surely you can't, you can't do anything if it's that bad. Well, of course you? you can't. Mine got, mine got very, very low, and it was, it was like I was... You you know, uh, sort of like almost chained to this bed with a heart monitoring machine and yeah, all sorts of wires stuck everywhere and, you know, uh, assisted breathing and all that kind of mm. stuff. But that's for another day. Yeah. No, what I'm saying here is these fizzy drinks now are, are starting to get, um, okay, uh, you know, according to so-called experts, mm. scientists believe replacing one sugary drink a day with unsweetened alternatives, tea or coffee, curbs an epidemic of type 2 diabetes. Right. Studies um, uh, consulted 25,000 people aged 40 to 79 to record everything they ate and drank in a food diary. Uh, and this exercise took over 11 years, by and the way. And where was this study published? 11 then? years. Where was this? So, so far we've had the Lancet, yes. we've had, what, the Neurological Bugle, what else? What, Neuroscience what, 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 Research. Yeah. What have you got here? Which one was this published in? Uh, this is Cambridge University uh, Medical Health Bulletin. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and uh, that's quite a good university. I think it was named as the best university in the world in a list Quite last a good week. university, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I was going to say, oh, best in the world. I doubt about that. Best in the world. By the way, actually, I meant to say this. Yeah. Do you know Toby Young, the guy who wrote How to um, Lose Friends and yes, Alienate yes. People? Do you know he went to Brazenose College, Oxford? Yes, I did, actually. Because he was writing about a, a reunion that he had up there. Oh, that's right, yeah. I knew he went to Cambridge. I didn't know it was actually Brazenose no, College. Oxford. Uh, oh, oh, Oxford, yeah. yeah. He went to, yeah. Well, that's the one you said you were going to go to. Well, I, I might have gone. I went to the interview and I decided that I wanted to do other things. Yeah. Um, and in fact, in fact, um, I saw some research from the University of the Trent last week, which I tweeted out about, but I can't remember oh, what it was now. No, I can't um, remember either. Uh, anyway, uh, it says here, um, beverages including sweetened tea or coffee, sweetened milk drinks, artificially sweetened beverages and juice. Um, juice is actually very bad for you can because all be of the bad. amount of sugar that yeah. it's got uh, in there. And they, they actually say you shouldn't even give that much juice to, to children. Actually, I had another. That's bo- why, by the way, yeah, you were yeah. asking me earlier why yeah. I drink so much water. Yeah. Water is the best thing you can drink, right? I yeah. drink at I the don't minimum know you... minimum a litre a day of water. I don't know why you do that. You get you get uh, you can poison yourself with water. Rubbish. You know that, don't you? No. Can you can not you, true. You can you can you can get it's all the sorts elixir of... of life. Well, I don't think so. Look, what I was going to say is I forgot to tell you. I also got some of my information from uh, Diabe- Diabetologia Times. <laughs> no, 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 it is. It's the Diabetologia ju- Times. Yeah, Diabetologia Times. Easy Seriously, for you to say. it's the Journal of the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. Really? Okay, yeah. I think you've become obsessed with with health. Now. Well, I'm not. I'm not obsessed you with health. Obsessed I'm not with obsessed it. with health. But actually, funny enough, because you are. Mm-hmm. We've discussed this before. Mm-hmm. You are mm-hmm. a bit of a hypochondriac, aren't no, you? No, I'm not. I'm not. But t- funny enough, what I was looking at today in one of my uh, medical journals was the effect of sunburn. Yeah. Because obviously it's raining today. But as you quite rightly said, it was quite nice on Saturday. It was sunny on Saturday, wasn't it? So yeah. I need to know how much how much sun I can allow my skin. Now listen to this three in four Britons mm. suffered sunburn in the past year and that could have more than doubled their odds of skin cancer. Now I don't get all well, this so uh, what? You know what? This is so what? ridiculous because I mean this is no, typical. No, I'm keeping an eye on no, things. but it's typical of these mm. kind of scare stories that mm. get done by the tabloids all the time, you know, that you know, yeah. is, is that, you know, your kitchen killing you you know, are you going to die from yeah. skin cancer yeah. because you go out in the sun? Yes, some people have un- unfortunately succumbed to that. Yes. Um, but not everybody who goes out in the sun is going to get skin cancer. Well, of course not, but it says sunburn is of particular concern because of the risk of malignant melanoma. You say most... that as though 
you've just discovered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you never heard of that? Yes, the most dead, deadly form of skin cancer has more than doubled in those who've suffered it even just one time. That sunburn. Yeah. You know, those who've suffered sunburn. Now... But you don't go out in the sun. No, of course not. You hide in the shade no, like a troll. I do, and I wear a hat in the sun and all that, because I'm so a head to get burnt. you worry about then. Well, you do, because, you see, there's a fine balance, Mike. You won't know these things, but I've studied the mechanics of the uh, human body, and there's a fine, very fine dividing line between the need for sunshine to give you vitamin D yeah. and the avoidance of sunburn, which can give you skin cancer. You don't understand these things. No, I don't. Now, the girl Wonder has tweeted... Oh, yeah. ...looking at this picture of you staring at the uh, the, uh, the chocolate, right? Yes. She says, the more I stare at this, the more I feel Mr Parry knows my innermost thoughts. And, uh, sorry, is that the chocolate speaking? No, it's not the chocolate speaking. No, it's somebody it. who's looking at the picture. Oh, I see. I'm not right, getting a tweet okay. from a bar of chocolate. No, no, no. But I thought Why you would were... the chocolate be speaking? I thought she was trying to be clever and say, this is, this is, you know, Porky staring at me, I'm the chocolate. You know what I mean? I thought it was being, like, a no, clever no, take on it. No, talking about herself. OK. How's the melting process going, by the way? Well, it'll happen, don't worry. It'll it happen. It doesn't seem to be melting at all, does it? it of course no, it's of course there's it'll no be residue. Melting. When I remove it, there's no residue of chocolate. You put it in the that wrong means... place. It's not on the keys. I told you it happens on the keys. You want it on the keys, yes, do you? Yes, yes. OK, so yes. Which, any particular key? Well, you put it on any... Put these keys here, which we on, don't use. I'll put it on P for plank, shall I? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Somebody, and also the... uh, uh, Something else which uh, could describe you at the moment. No, don't be rude. No. Now, the doctor Mm. in Mexico, uh, who listens to the show avidly, uh, has sent us a picture of a chocolate keyboard. How about that? A chocolate keyboard? Yeah. (laughs) What's all that about, then? you can get a chocolate keyboard. So, obviously, that doesn't melt, does it? Otherwise, we would use it. Why would you want a chocolate keyboard? In case you get hungry. That's ridiculous. It's like the old chocolate teapot joke, isn't it? Now then, um, get the chocolate ba- teapot joke. Oh, you know, you're as much used as a chocolate teapot yeah. with all of that, haven't we? Right now then, a spokesman for this sunburn organisation, right? Because I've got this. <laughs> Still going on about sunburn. This is from the British Association of Dermatologists. Is it okay? Well, and they they deal with skin dermatology. They certainly do. And it says a spokesman said three quarters of people admitted they've been sunburned in the past year, which is shocking. Mm. With sunny days already making an appearance, it's like this figure will remain this year. Now, have you ever had sunburn? Uh, yeah, of course I have. Do you know? What, as a kid, the as worst sunburn I mm, got actually mm. was in Puerto Rico uh, when um, I went snorkeling right. and didn't wear a t-shirt because one of the things that you kind of learn later on, I know in the life effect of that is that is that you have to wear. If a you're t-shirt. lying on the water mm. with a, a naked back, yeah. and the reflection of the sun off the water yeah. intensifies it on your back, exactly, yeah. and the water and the salt act like cooking oil to yeah. your back, and it's incredibly and that was, painful. That was by far and away the worst sunburn I've ever had. I literally had to, to lie, I had to sleep on my stomach because yes. it was so sore. Well, and then it peeled, of course, later on. So some days later. Do you know what? I What I can't uh, believe is how irresponsible all our parents were when we were little kids. They didn't realise we were being irresponsible, mm. but used to go to the beach. We used to go to Prestatin and Frith in yeah. North Wales. Right. And then your mum would, you know, put your, you know, you get your swimming trunks on and off you go. You wouldn't see your mum and dad for three or four hours. Yeah. And you go running around the sand dunes, running in and out of the water, and you didn't have any cream on. Yeah. No cream, no hat, no well, nothing. Was, I mean, there wasn't the great availability of it that, that there that's is what now I'm saying. as well. And, and some nights I'd go home in the back of the old Morris Minor mm. and literally couldn't sit there with my shoulders mm. on the seat because you're quite right, right, you just get burnt to a crisp. And you do see people even now, particularly not so mm. much in London, really, mm. but you do see it more, say, in Scotland and, and maybe yeah. in North Wales, where the sun doesn't come out an awful lot. That's right. And suddenly when you do have a sunny day, yeah. you see everybody coming in for work the next day with terrible sunburn. Oh, terrible sunburn. Because they've all been out in the pub all afternoon. Yeah, you know, you're right. Now, I went to Spain one time. It's the first time I think I went on my own without my parents, you know. Mm. And, of course, what happens then is you actually don't see any sunshine because yeah. you spend all night in nightclubs. Right. The nightclubs are all open till at least 6am, if not 8am. But isn't that where people go then and they don't bother staying in hotels, they sleep on the beach? I don't know, do they? Yeah, I think sometimes. What yeah. a slobbish thing to do, well, honestly. I, I mean, it's saving a bit of money, wouldn't it? Can't believe you go it. go nightclubbing all night, sleep on the beach, washing the sea, you know? Well, I don't know about that. Um, you know, I have need a proper bathroom and uh, and a uh, proper restaurant to eat in and all that kind of stuff. But no, anyway... You don't. Yeah, I do. But anyway, look, the point is... So on the last day, I thought, I'm going to go home white, as white as I was when I got here. Mm. This is not good enough. Right. So I decided to curb the night successes at about four o'clock, went home, had two hours sleep, got up, and then I went... Literally, I went out on the beach and I lay on the beach for two hours. Yeah without any sun cream on my face, so I get a tan to right. go home. Right. What happened was... You just went red, presumably. I didn't just go red, my face exploded. <laughs> when, I, when I got on the plane to go home, they almost wouldn't let me on, because right. I looked like um, Elephant Man. 
you know, my face had mm. blown up with blisters, really. Yeah. It was shocking. Right. It was absolutely shocking. And my eyes had closed up, yeah. and, and it was a really stupid thing to do, but I thought it would just give me a bit of a tan. Yeah. And well, that's the thing. Your body and your face is not used to that strength of well, sunlight. Well, that's right. And mm. do you know what? I think ever since it might have affected my looks. Um, <laughs> because, no, I do. I think I think I disfigured myself. Yeah, I think you might have I you scarred might have myself done. and disfigured myself. Yeah. And one time, I lost a job because of sunburn. Because when I was about 18, or no, younger, I was still at school, I was mm. about 16 or 17, right. I had a job in which I had to run up and down a field with a red flag so that a helicopter Why? that was, well, a helicopter was spray cropping, oh, yeah. or crop spraying, crop spraying, right. And what you had to do is, you had what to. What was a helicopter for? They just use a plane. No, it's a helicopter. It was a helicopter to spray the crops. And well, what normally you... they use planes, don't they, for that? No, they use a helicopter because it's, it's uh, more accurate to get down and get down lower. Yeah, but and... does it blow them all away, though? No, no, not at all, not at all. And uh, and what I had to do is I had to run 60 paces mm. every time the helicopter went over right. and the helicopter turned and came back so it could uh, use its wing, because they had two wings with the spray things oh, on, yeah. to come back and do it properly. Oh, OK. And unfortunately, you know, I had a day off on a Sunday, went to the beach, got terribly badly sunburned, couldn't make it in that day. And they were very unforgiving. They said, you know, good to us, you're an unreliable worker. Well, that's true. And I said, no, I'm they not. It's not. It's not my fault that I'm, you know, in pain and, 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 and so forth. They said, you should have looked after yourself. Mm. So I asked the job. Mind you, I didn't mind because I kept getting covered in the spray. Yeah. And, it was, and my done, hair started that, dropping out. Well, that couldn't have done you much good. Yeah, I mean, that, exactly. may have, that may have disfigured you as well. Yeah, it I once, did I ever tell mm. you the story when I was in Portugal once yeah. playing golf? Right. And uh, got quite a bit. Because sometimes in the golf course, it started off, it was, I think it was around about April time. So yeah. it wasn't that hot yeah. in the morning. You know, there was a bit of dew on the ground. And so I didn't bother putting any sun cream yes. on. By the time I was finishing the round, yes. it was kind of, you know, midday. Yes. And it was about, you know, kind of 30 degrees and mm. really, really sunny. Mm. So I got quite a bad sunburn. So I thought I'll buy some after sun cream on the way oh, home. Right. Okay. You know, mm. and uh, because it was all in Portuguese, mm. I picked up this stuff. But what I didn't realise was it was after sun with tanning accelerator. Oh. Right? And uh, so I put this stuff yes. on, went out for dinner. Yeah. Obviously, a few drinks were taken, you mm. know, got back home, mm. got up in the middle of the night mm. to use the bathroom, put the light on, mm. and literally almost jumped out of my skin because mm. my face had gone completely kind of a different colour. Orange. It had, no, it had gone like really dark brown. Good God. Really, really dark brown. So and you thought you had of, some terrible illness. Well, well people mm. I, I, people were introducing me to, to various other, you know, whenever yeah. we went to these new yeah. golf courses, they were introducing me as Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. And people yeah. said, they were like, well, they're, yeah. they're not going to let you back into the country no, I because think you they look would. so different from your actual passport picture. I know. But, uh, the, well, yeah. you know, what a, what a shockingly incompetent thing to have done. Very embarrassing. Brian mm. in Islington says this, mm. Dear Mr Graham, is Porky turning into an upper-class Chelsea Sloan? His regular use of the word ya seems to be mm. increasing. Mm. We all know he secretly aspires to being a posh, sophisticated southerner. I am. Uh, however, whenever MG gets him riled, his mm. real Chester Scally accent soon reappears. I don't think so. That's from Brian in, in Islington. In fact, I'm going to tell you something about what the you aspiring time. middle classes need to do. Yeah. I'll tell you next. Well, tell, tell, me, you next. tell me later on yeah. because yeah. Uh, we're running out of time. Look at the light for a moment. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. Look at the light! The two mics, Jim. General election special on Salzburg. Mike Perry's waistline. Gain. Mike Graham's hairline. Loss. Mike Graham's likelihood of having a coronary. Gain. Mike Perry's wallet. Loss. It's the most exciting election in living memory. You can spend it in the company of some of the most seriously brilliant political minds in the country. Or you can listen to me and Mike Graham. Here on Talk Sport. Stick to the facts and get back to basics with the UK's most straightforward after poll party. It's a well hung parliament of politics, partying, and for second. The two Mike's election night special with the dishonourable members for Talk Sport. Me, Mike Porky Parry, and him, Mike Graham. It's the first time either of them have had an election in five years. Throughout election night on Talk Sport. Tweet us at the two mics, at Mike Parry 8, at uh, IROMG, of course. I've got one here from William who says, mm-hmm. uh, maybe severe sunburn brought on Porky's exploding head syndrome. How's that going, by the way? Uh, well... Have you I... managed to conquer that? Uh, no, it's controllable. That's is controllable, it? yeah. yeah. But a lot of that is in your he- in your mind, so to speak, well, rather I would, than in one, your I wonder your about that, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, have you found that uh, eating certain types of food triggers it? Because some people will nope. say, you know the old wives' yep. tale that if you eat cheese late at night, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you'll get bad nightmares? No, 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 no nothing like that. I no. had a very strange dream yeah. the other day, but I'm not going to tell you about it. Really? Robin in Winchmore Hill has texted into 81089. Yes. Uh, it's the worst sunburn was when I was about 10, mm. uh, and I'm now 69 years old. He says, at South End on the mud, when my older brother trained a magnifying glass on my back while I was asleep on my front. Oh, that's it very took helpful. many, many months for the deep burn to heal. I'm not surprised. That's what pretty a horrible, stupid isn't it? thing to do, yeah. That's awful. Absolutely terrible. Mm. It reminds me of. Um, 
of Paul Gascoigne um, playfully firing uh, air gun pellets into the um, posterior of Jimmy Five Bellies. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just for a bit of fun. Yeah, it's not but a very it, good it's idea. It's not, not a lot of fun for the person who's the recipient. Uh, I want to talk to you more about what's this dream then? Come on, what's this dream? It was just a very weird, a very weird dream. Well, it's... you've got to tell us now because you said, "Oh, I can't tell you about it." So the 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 uh, the listenership, the audience yeah. are now intrigued. Okay. What was it all about? Well, I mean, normally I'm quite good at interpreting my dreams because, of course, I've read Freud's book of dreams, right. which tells you pretty much all about what dreams you're having, why you're okay. having them, and why if you dream about. I always lose my car. If you fall, yeah. Well, that's that's about sort of lack of confidence. That it's not lack of confidence. It is. It's rubbish. It's because it you've got, you got so much going on in your head. No, it's not. It's because you mm. fear you fear the loss of something, which means that you're lacking confidence. What? That's very straightforward. I don't think so. No, this dream was mm. about. It was about. It was three Swedish women, right? One of them, oh, I yeah. think, was all a mother. All good lookers. Uh, one of them was, yeah, they were all quite good. One of yeah. them was a mother, and the other two were, I think, sisters, right? Yeah. And uh, and they were all in bed in my apartment. Right. And I walked into the apartment, and yeah. they were there, and they were complaining about the fact that there was no air conditioning in the apartment. Right. And then one of them got up and sat on the edge of the window, mm-hmm. right? And as I was talking to the other two, yeah. she suddenly threw herself out. She fell off? No, she threw herself out the window. And how, how high up were you? Well, I was three stories up. Which apartment is it? My apartment in London. Oh, I see. I thought you might have uh, meant somewhere in New York no. on the 33rd floor no, or something. No, it was my apartment in London. Oh, God, that is gruesome. Yeah, I woke up. And did she die? Well, I don't know. You but, didn't look out the window to see? Well, I did look out the window. I saw her lying there. Yeah. And I heard the crash when she landed. This is terrible. Isn't that, that awful? I mean, that's almost like, you know, that's going to happen, if you see what I mean. Well, you no, know. it's not like Next time happen. you meet three Swedish women on the way home, might be extremely <laughs> careful about... Well, I don't uh, think that's very likely to happen. Inviting them in. Look, we need to talk more about Newcastle yes, because we this do. is not going to go away. Yeah. Um, and there's a disgraceful situation. It according, is a crisis, isn't it? According to reports that we're going to read in tomorrow morning's papers, yeah. I mean, all sorts of things are going on there. Apparently, there was a massive row between John Carver and the whole of his team at yeah. half time. He accused them of not trying. Yeah. Well, he couldn't what? be he couldn't be accused of getting that wrong, could he? They didn't look like they were trying. No. Uh, and I saw Phil Neville's verdict on it on yeah. Match of the Day on um, Saturday night. Did they play on Saturday in Newcastle? They did, didn't they? They did, yeah. yeah. And he said some of the players' attitude was disgraceful. What, I, what is the but most... But what did you make of him then accusing one of his well, own players of deliberately getting sent off? And it was a weird thing, wasn't it? Well, because, I mean, they were both pretty much off, uh, off to the side. He didn't have to make the tackle. Unbelievable. That, you're talking about Mike Williamson. Mike Williamson, A yeah. player who I'd really barely even heard of before yeah. the incident took place. Right. But but Williamson chased a player off the pitch and yeah. belted him above the knee with mm. his with his feet in in a very obvious foul. Well, it was a very high tackle, wasn't it? A very high tackle. He was already on one yellow card, so it, it, it was very clear. And and uh, he must have known he was on one yellow card. He well, must have known well, he unless, get unless he'd lost his head completely. But mm. what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is. For John Carver then to say, I think he got himself deliberately sent off. And yeah. I, I just couldn't understand all over the weekend. I thought, well, why would a player get himself deliberately sent off? But somebody's interpreted that in one of the papers tomorrow morning as meaning Williamson decided he couldn't be bothered he to play for the team it, yeah. for the rest of the season. Right. So if he gets himself sent off for the last three games because it was reckless behaviour yeah. or, or what's it called? Violent conduct. Behavior. Violent yeah. conduct, yeah. yeah. Even though it was a second yellow mm. card, it can be judged as violent conduct yeah. on the one instant alone. Yeah. So, and, and if he's been sent off before the season, which I think he has, you get yeah. a two-match ban and anyway. And if that's true, yes. then that is a terrible indictment of, course of it is. the way things have gone badly wrong at Newcastle. Of course it is. But we talked a little bit earlier as well about the effect that the fans are having. Yeah. And there's one of the papers this morning saying that some of the team players are saying mm. to their families, especially the, the guys from overseas, you know, don't come to St James Park anymore. Yeah, because of what you know, abuse you might suffer. I know, I know. which is a terrible it's, situation. It's, it's absolutely shocking, and, yeah. and and you really wonder where it's all um, going to end and where it's all got to. And I, what I don't understand is, Mr Ashley is one of the most successful businessmen yeah. in this country. Well, he was in the billionaires list, wasn't he, the other week? He's the just got into the billionaires list. You know, yeah. one point oh four billion or something like that. So if you're good enough to make all that sort of money, your judgment is usually pretty sound. Mm. The judgment here has gone completely. Like a lot of businessmen, when they get into football, their brains turn to scrambled eggs. I think it's a case of somebody um, sort of sticking their, their heads in the sand. I don't mean to bring Nigel Pearson back into it. But, no. But, you know, because he's always taken the view that, you know, as a, as a, as a sort of, um, as a, as a, run, a well-run company, yeah. Newcastle does OK. Mm. You know, they make money. They've got £34 million in the bank. Yeah. As far as he's concerned, what's the point of spending that on a load of players? No, I totally that agree. Not, they're not going to get them any further up the table than 8th or 7th anyway, right? So I, let's t- just I stay, totally agree. But what, I suppose what you can't factor into a business decision is yeah. the attitude of the fans. No, you can't. And and but also um, where the serious misjudgment happened was not immediately replacing Alan Pardew with a proper manager. Yeah. And I, I, no disrespect to John Carver, I feel so sorry for the poor guy now. Did you know, by the way, when I when the the latest defeat added up to eight consecutive yeah. defeats, I thought, well, that must be a club record. Mm. It's not, isn't it? In the nineteen late nineteen seventies, apparently. 
They suffered ten consecutive defeats. Did they really? Yeah. And were they in the first division then? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, right. they were because they played in the FA Cup final, didn't they? Nineteen seventy-three. Mm. No, I mean I know they were mostly when in the first Ma- division. Well, McDonald, uh, McDonald's their centre yeah. forward. So yeah, I think they were. Um, but so, that's the other problem when mm. you think about these teams and you think about who's playing for them now, and you think of people like McDonald. Yeah. And you think about uh, you know uh, Alan Shearer and all yes. that. I mean, there's nobody really in that Newcastle team, as you say. Mike Williamson's not a guy you would have heard no. of. There's an awful lot of them that you would never heard of. Never heard of him, honestly. And uh, and and he's quite rightly say not household names, not even sort of good Premier League names. But, no. but what will happen to John Carver? Because John Carver now is so identified with Newcastle, um, although he's been given um, the opportunity to see it out till the end of the season, that appears to be only because um, Steve McLaren turned the job down when he was offered it because he didn't want to be in charge of a team that might be relegated, right? Right. So what happens to John Carver over the summer? He's so indelibly linked with Newcastle yeah. now, he can't go anywhere else. Well, apparently he's got this eight-year contract as well, because everyone, along with Pardew, team down... Well, all got the eight-year they, contracts. They all got the eight-year contracts, Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I can't see how he could possibly work at the club in any other capacity now than manager, because if somebody else comes in, they're going to say, oh, you're the hopeless John Carver, are you, that uh, got us a club record of... Uh, or near club record of eight consecutive defeats. I'm just uh, so, moving the chocolate around, by the way. It still hasn't melted. Well, what are you doing that for? Well, in case you want to move it to another part of the keyboard, it might I be I think warmer. you can take that chocolate off that keyboard now. This is a ridiculous exercise. It's not exercise. working, is it? it I, don't know why, I don't know why we got into it in the first place. Well, I, I don't know. know why you waste my time with these pathetic <laughs> um, challenges, you, you know. You said which, it would uh, melt, the key, you melt the chocolate. Well, it will. It will. Well, but, I mean, well, I don't wish it, I don't wish it to melt. Millennium. I do not wish it Have to melt. I listen to this from David, who mm. sent this in at the two mics. He said, I woke my wife up because of you two. Mm. I was laughing loudly. Now I'm in big trouble. Oh, really? What was he laughing at? He was laughing at us. No, probably laughing at your ridiculous behaviour over the weekend. Well, he might have been uh, laughing at your just, suggestion that the chocolate was sort of like somebody sent just, you a tweet. Just to remind the audience, just in case you weren't listening in the first hour, uh, why, Mr Graham, why do you, why do who, you says, on, uh... who says he doesn't have any sort of a problem, so Saturday night over into Sunday in preparation for the big fight, uh, I'll just repeat his drinking why menu. You, why would you make a big thing of this? One bottle of white, one bottle of red, one bottle of rosé, and a bottle of bourbon whiskey. No, that's now, not true. That's not a, well, no, I, well, that's oh, not true. Well, that's what you've told me. No, I didn't drink a bottle of bourbon. Oh, how much of it did you drink? Well, I drank about, I don't know, about three or four glasses of No, it. no, no. You said half a bottle well, earlier. Well, it was, no, it was about a third of a bottle. Oh, a third. Well, you said a half earlier. No, I'm not and sure. And if it's half, that's 16 measures of sure. whiskey. That's eight that's large... That's a 12-hour period. That's eight, yeah, eight large scotches. That's a 12-hour period. Well, over a 12-hour period, you were drinking about one um, large scotch an hour, plus... A How bo- do you mean? That's 12. Pl- uh, uh, yeah, plus... Yeah, well, it peters out towards the end oh, right. when your tolerance goes. I see. Um, plus a glass of white, plus a glass of red, plus a glass of rosé, OK? I tell you what, you're going to be in worse state, mate, than... Well, like um, I say, there's only one of us yeah, who is in yeah. a perilous state and, and you know, more, much more likely to keel over yeah. than, uh, than, uh, than, than me. Yeah. And that's you. I don't think so. One third of your heart works. I don't think so. You wouldn't blame Newcastle fans if they'd taken to drink. And by the way, did you see all the disturbances at Blackpool where the game was I abandoned? I did. I mean, did you see one guy with a mask on actually got right up to Into the top the of the stand box, yeah. to try to get in the director's lounge? got in the director's box. Some of them did get, get in there, I think. In the they? director's lounge. Mm. And you could see the director behind the glass door holding the... the, mm. the I mean, you know, there's... there's Almost like civil insurrection going well, on at Blackpool. Well, you can't really blame them no, either. No, you can't, no. And, I mean, I had a conversation with a couple of the Blackpool fans because, we, yeah. you know, I'm very much behind them mm. trying to get some kind of mm. um, resolution to the situation there mm. because the Oyston family clearly are not running that club in the way that the fans want them to. That's right. Uh, even though they once again will say, well, we put money into the club, we run it any way we want. Yes. But, I mean, the problem is, of course, uh, there, that I'm amazed that the, the Football League have said, basically, they're not going to replay the game. Mm. Um, and we await to see what they do with the points because I think it was nil nil when the game was abandoned yes. right? so I mean if they give Blackpool a point for that surely that's going to encourage other teams uh, fans to do exactly well, the same thing you may well be right it'd be interesting to hear the explanation but um, the I mean Blackpool are so badly down aren't they so badly uh, off at the bottom yeah. that no increase in points is going to re- resolve their well, position it's, no, anyway it's, no it's they not were already but, relegated. but what I'm saying is, is it might well be a bad yeah. precedent to no, set no I agree but I, I don't agree. want to talk too much about it because it might make it an appearance in winners and losers of course oh right okay Mike from Preston says chocolate has a melting point which can start in the low 90s Fahrenheit yeah. commonly melts at 104 to 109 degrees Fahrenheit mm. no keyboard gets that hot just admit you were wrong. No, I'm not admitting I was wrong because I didn't say it was the keyboard. I said it's other screens around the I keyboard right. which 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 emanate and float hot air across the you've keyboard. Seen the time, by the way. Which don't worry the about time. the time when I you am. just want to wriggle out of something. No, no, I'm not wriggling out. I'm just proving, you're a wriggler. proving that I'm correct and you're not. Once again, this is Talk Sport. Crazy, but that's how it goes. Millions 
of people living as hobos. Yeah, yeah, but maybe. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. Winners and losers coming up very, uh, very shortly. But uh, we must talk about the other big story that's been yes. dominating the news over the last few days. And of course, that's the royal baby. Royal baby, yeah. yeah. Do you know? I didn't even know it'd been born on Saturday. I was so busy. And, busy. Yeah. And, really. And it was. Um, was it born at eight oh four a.m.? I can't remember. Yeah, I think that was the announcement when it came out. Saying, yeah. she'd, "Do you know what? Do you know the strangest thing is? The, a lot of interest is in how well Kate looked yeah. just hours after giving birth to yeah. the baby." Right. And bizarrely enough, because of course I track all the coverage on these things, because I keep in touch. It's a, it's an old habit from one well, of the I mean, news editors. Years, well, years and years ago, mm. you would have been all over this like a rash, wouldn't oh, you? Oh yeah, I mean, of you course you would. Yeah. Special teams being sent yeah. out. Yeah. You would have been masterminding all yeah. sorts of uh, invasive but I, I don't, pieces that you were going to write. I don't pay a lot of attention to it anymore. But I anyway, you remember no. old Will Stewart, our uh, our old pal, who's, our friend uh, in Russia. In Russia, yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's the Moscow correspondent mm. for a lot of newspapers. But I used Is to work still, with Will. Is he still that? Because I think yes. he does a lot of other things as well. Now. Oh, he does a lot of other things. But I he's... told you I saw, I saw him at, uh, at uh, Tyne Castle one day, walking yeah, side right. by side with Mr Romanov, who um, was the uh, owner. Who was the owner of... Um, uh... And he'd, he'd suddenly become some kind of senior advisor stroke spokesman. Yeah, that's for right. Him. Well, well uh, Will was my Will. political <laughs> editor, yeah. uh, funnily enough, because there's an election coming up on Thursday night. It certainly is. When I, you know, was All in charge of... Thursday, that's right, when I was in charge of the election at the Daily Express. Oh, yeah. And we went to the... What do you mean when you were in charge of the election? Because I was, I was the news editor, I was in charge of the election. No, right? no, the political editor was in charge. No, of no, 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 no. I was just saying he was my political editor. He worked to me. No. And I took him to the Savoy for a champagne breakfast when it was all over right. because, you know, everybody done a good job and all that. But what he's writing uh, out of there is this ludicrous story. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that Will's made it up or anything. He's got all his facts right, but it's ludicrous. Is this in the Express? Uh, no, it's, I, I don't, I'm not sure what it was in. I, I picked it up on a, on a website, but... What Will's writing is that Russians yesterday insisted there had been a conspiracy over the royal births and actually a surrogate mother must have carried the baby princess. What? Why would the Russians write that? Well, because, you know, there's a whole kind of, shall we say, business out there. Yes. Um, Russia Today, which is the Russian, you know, sort of version of Al Jazeera, if you That's like. That's right, yeah. You know, and they're constantly, constantly feeding the conspiracy yeah. theorists in the West well, get... to try and make them believe that these things are actually happening. Well, when I check this out to find out what's going on, mm. you won't believe this, but actually the new royal baby has been born on the birthday of Catherine the Great of Russia. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what they're saying is, the Russians are saying, actually, the baby was probably born a few days earlier because that's why um, Kate, the mother, looks so good, yeah. right? And that they kept it a secret until the day of the Catherine the Great's birthday in sympathy and empathy with Catherine the Great being deposed. This is like sort of David Icke territory, I know, isn't it? But being deposed as a member of the royal family yeah. when the Romanovs were all slaughtered, weren't they, by the, uh, the Bay mobs and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, you, know, uh, you don't really take any of this seriously, though, do you? Well, this is what Will's right. reporting from Moscow, so obviously the Russians are thinking this. Mm. So a leading pro-Kremlin paper uh, claimed the Duchess of Cambridge put the health of her daughter at risk for the sake of her subjects by appearing in public too soon. That's nonsense. Russian that's women said it was impossible that's for Prince nonsense. William's wife to look so good immediately after the birth. If she really gave birth naturally, it was surely some days ago, um, said a woman commenting on the story in Com Solomolaskaya Pravada newspaper. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Can what you, you just give us that one again? Yeah. Uh, Com Solomolaskaya Pravada newspaper. OK? Right. I don't think I've heard of that. Another one said... Look, sure that's not just Pravda, for sure? It, 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 uh, no, I've just told you what it is, you fool. Um, another wrote, look at the baby. She does not look like a newborn at all. She's at least three days old. I mean, well, this is all nonsense, isn't it? It was a surrogate the truth mother. Of the matter is, if yeah. you go in to have a second child, yeah. quite likely yeah. the likelihood is that the labour will not be particularly long. <laughs> uh, and uh, and, yeah. and actually, um, when you when you when you have a reasonably healthy delivery, they they send you home straight away anyway. <laughs> know, but listen to this: what the Russians go on to say. It was a surrogate mother who gave birth, but not her. Uh, Kate must have been wearing a fake belly for several <laughs> weeks. It is just not real to walk yourself. Uh, to walk yourself several hours after birth and wave mm. to the public. Rubbish. Others said it was impossible for Kate to look so radiant. Yeah. She did not give birth, I'm sure, said one. 
That's absolute cobbler. This is amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm amazed that Will, that Will Stewart would have fallen for all that stuff. But the thing that surprises me even mm. more is, as you say, you know, years and years ago, we yeah. would have been well stuck into it. But actually now, one, I couldn't really care less. But no. also, all these newspapers doing these kind of eight-page pull I just pull-outs, don't get it, Mike. 20-page pull Do you know what? But you know what's interesting about that? What? And this is where, you know, mm. these new press regulations and the way that the press now operates in this yeah. country is completely wrong. When uh, uh, William turned up with their other child, George, That's right, right. there was all these oohs and ahs because right. nobody in this country has seen a picture of George since, since he was actually birth, born, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Now, unfortunately for anybody in any other part of the world, yeah. or fortunately, yeah. loads of people have seen pictures of George because loads of these foreign magazines are publishing pictures of him all, right, the all the time. The yeah. papers here have decided mm. for whatever reason, and maybe it's a good idea yeah. not, not to publish them, yes. but all you've got to do is go onto the internet yeah. and, and you'll find thousands of yeah. them. I mean, I mean, look, I don't get it. It's, so the baby was born Saturday, so mm. the first supplements appeared on Sunday in yeah. the Sunday papers, right. and they were all over the front and the back and the middle. So then you've got Monday morning's papers, they've got supplements in them. I can't believe that, you know, your old paper and mine, the old... Is it the Express? Uh, well, that's certainly uh, our old paper. Uh, well, that's, one our, of them. that's our old paper. Has has got another... Uh, has he got a pull-out? No, somebody's got a pull-out. The son, the son have got one. Has the son got a pull-out? Yeah, yeah there you go. Pull-out. There you go. And, and, and this is on day three after the birth. Mm. Why are they still publishing pull-outs, you know... Three and four well, days after is, the birth well, of the baby. Well, because there is a demand for it. That's well, I don't think there is anymore, you see, because what I'm saying is the only way you could get pictures in those days was through the newspapers. But now, as you've quite rightly just said, there are millions of images available of, uh, of, of her yeah, and the people, baby I mean, and everything people, else. Think about those people that you've mm. seen queuing up outside the hospital, queuing up outside Buckingham Palace. Yeah. You know, they tend to be, generally speaking, of an older generation. They like to have their souvenir yeah. newspapers. You know, like, your mother likes to keep souvenir newspapers, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, funnily enough, you know... I've collected various bits of, you know, I collected, for example, I mean, the Times mm, mm. souvenir of, sort of those wraparound covers they did during the, during the yes. 2012 Olympics. Yes. I've kept a couple of those. I thought they were great. Now, you mm, might go, you know, mm, 10 years later going, mm. what on earth did I keep that for? Yeah, sure. But I quite like oh, to I've, actually keep souvenirs of some of those types of newspapers. I've got a copy of every newspaper, a clean, fresh copy of every copy of a newspaper mm. on the day after Diana Princess of Wales was killed. Well, you know what I've got? I've got that whole week, because I was at the Express that week, yeah. and I was night editor, and I've got mm. that whole week's paper papers in cellophane right. um, because I got them to deliver one special one to me every single night right. that was wrapped that yeah. I could keep so it wouldn't actually you know, yeah, fade. Yeah, yeah good. And, because uh, it was such an extraordinary time. Well, as I was the person who broke the news to the world that so Diana Princess of so Wales had us. died... Well, you didn't actually, did I you? I did, no, through rat like cunning. I no, did. I tracked down no. politicians no, as no, far away no, as Manila in no, the Philippines. Didn't. Yes, I did. No, you did not. Yes, I did. You had a royal correspondent yes. who broke the news. No, 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 no. It was defence correspondent. I keep telling you the story. My defence correspondent at the Press Association was with Robin Cook, who was the... Uh, uh, foreign, secretary? foreign Secretary. Foreign Secretary. Yeah. And Charlie was the, the defence uh, 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 and diplomatic uh, editor for right. us. He was with him. So as soon as I heard yeah, about but it... those are the guys that did it, not you. I mean, you might no, have no, had the idea. No, 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 no. But they asked the question. It was in the early, they got the story. It was in the early days of mobile phones. I thought, I'm going to give Charlie a ring. Mm. Why? Because I knew from having studied the British Constitution, in which I got an O-level, grade yeah. three... Chocolate still has a melted I, 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 Look, forget about the chocolate. I'm not interested in chocolate, OK? Right. Don't want to talk about oh, the chocolate. I just mentioning it. it hasn't melted Don't want to talk yet. about the blinking chocolate. I knew, I knew through my, uh, my um, uh, application to the British Constitution that if a member of a royal family died on foreign soil, the way you had to communicate it to the government of the royal family... Yeah was through the Foreign Secretary, not through the Prime Minister Mm. or President. Yes. So I thought, well, if there's anything to be told, it will be told to Robin Cook. Yeah. Ha-ha, I have a man with Robin Cook in Manila, in the Philippines. Right. Ha-ha, I ring him and I say, Charlie, go and see Mr Robin Cook and find out if Diana is any more uh, seriously ill than we all think she is. Did you have to go out of the pub or what was he doing? What was he doing? Yeah, what was he doing? Who? Your correspondent. He, he was with uh, Robin Cook at the airport. Right. They were about to take off for oh, somewhere okay. else. And I said, uh, you know, because all the French are telling us is that she's got lacerations to her leg and she might have a broken arm and all this kind of mm. stuff. I said, it sounds much, much more serious than that. Anyway, he came back within an hour and he said, she's dead. I said, are we sure about this? He said, I'm absolutely certain. I said, who's told you? She said, he said, Robin Cook has told me personally. Mm. He's been informed and he has to now inform the uh, Prime Minister and the Queen and all this kind of stuff, you know. So um, so I had no hesitation. I went with it and, uh, you know, said something like, you know, the Press Association learned through different channels. Well, whose name was on the story? Uh, well, there was no name on the initial flash because it, it was only four lines uh-huh. to say that Diana was dead. Right. But it caused a friction of... 
uh, excitement around the world. Mm. I saw people running sideways, smashing into each other really? on TV channels around the world and all right. this kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. claiming victory on that one. I, I, I broke it. I broke Ian it. Gibb has texted mm. and he says, Robin Cook was in Jakarta when Diana died, not Manila. No, he wasn't. He was in Manila. No, I take your word for that. He was in Manila. I would not I, question I that. Because um, uh, I uh, I rang our, our defence correspondent there, so there's absolutely no doubt about that. By the way, talking about royals and all mm. that, you know the Middletons now are very middle class. Uh, class, yes. The Middletons being yeah. uh, Kate's parents. Yes. Do you know what they've reintroduced? A sense of identity to the middle classes, and I've taken their advice. What do you mean? Well, well one thing a man what do you mean a sense of identity. Uh, uh, one thing a man now who r- r- rates himself as middle class mm. must have. Right. And, and do you rate yourself as middle yes, class? Yes, I do. Yes, I, I do. You're a man yeah. of the people. No, no. no. Oh, Hang on, well, you're supposed to be a man of the people. Well, you can be a middle class man of the people. No, you can't, can't you? be a middle. Is um, that your new thing then? You're middle class man of the yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Why not? But well, uh, you've working. You come from working class roots, very well, proudly. Well, well, What's going on about Birkenhead? Pulled myself up by my bootlaces, um, and I went out and bought one on Saturday. What did you buy? A blue blazer. A blue blazer. A blue blazer, yeah. Are you having a laugh? No, no. Has it got, like, brass buttons and everything? Yes, it has, yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got to wear it tomorrow night. Well, maybe you I will. Maybe I, maybe I will. I, I've got a shame in having a blue blazer. What's That's wrong pathetic. with it? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Why would you wear a blazer? I like a blue blazer. I think it makes me look distinguished. Well, it doesn't make you look it distinguished. Does. It, it does. It makes you look like an old duffer. No, it doesn't. It will. No, it doesn't. No, no, not you at all. You put a badge on it as well. No, but I might get a boater because I fancy, um, you know, looking a bit sort of chic in, uh, in summer well, and that kind of stuff. Well, Henley's coming up soon. Well, ma- ma- no, they're good. And, uh, and the other thing is I might start walking around with an umbrella because... Uh, well, it is raining. Well, it is. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And, uh, and you know, just change my image a little bit, that's all. What, too? I might even... It is suggested that the best way to, uh, you know, be attractive to um, society in general yeah. is a blue blazer and walk around with a, a tennis racket under your arm as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like yeah. Cary Grant. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen that app, by like the way, that, that if, you show, if you take a picture of yourself, it mm. tells you how old you are? Oh, really? I'll oh, tell no. you about that coming oh, no, up next. No, 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 there's no. some shocking news on that front. Mm. Uh, mm. Not about you, but more about me, really. Exactly. Uh, this is Talk Sport uh, mm. Extra Time. We are the two mics. Winners and losers coming next. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The pressure's on now. Relieve the itch. Talk Sport. Baby. For the new format of winners and losers, we need the audience's yep. assistance here. Now, we tried it two ways already. Mm, mm. Retweet if you think uh, Mike Graham has won. Yep. Retweet if you think Mike Parry has won. Yep. Uh, this week, uh, I'll let you choose which way round you want it to go. Right, I'll have uh, retweet for supporters of my list. OK, so okay. if you think Mike Parry should win winners yeah. and losers, then you retweet uh, what I'm going to send out shortly on uh, uh, on uh, the two mics uh, yeah. uh, on Twitter uh, and favourite mm. if you think mm. that uh, mm. that I should win it. Now, we haven't got a great deal of time, so you better get on with it. Right. Um, do you want to go off with your losers first, or you seem to be shuffling an awful lot of papers? No, you've, no, lost, no. you've lost it all, No, you? no, 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 no. Yeah, I'll go off with, uh, I'll go off with my losers first, yeah, OK? Yeah, go on then. Right, um, I think the uh, biggest loser... Uh, one of the biggest losers is um, Judd Trump for not winning the World Snooker Championship. I've never heard of the guy who's won it, right? What, Graham uh, Bingham or somebody? Bingham, yeah, Stuart Bingham. Stuart Bingham, mm. right? Didn't even recognise his face. Well, now I... you've heard of him, though, because he's now the winner. Yeah, but yeah, but I never even recognised his face when I saw he got to the final, yeah, right? Okay. Judd Trump should have lifted the competition because uh, once Ronnie O'Sullivan had gone out, he was the most charismatic player in the world and he should have won it and he didn't, OK? okay. All right, so... well, I suppose that qualifies him as a loser. Yes, absolutely. I'm not very impressed with it, though. Very obvious. No, no, well, I'm sorry, he is. The second loser is Sting, right? Sting. Sting, yeah. Sting, you know who Sting is? I do know who Sting is. Right, Sting... Um... Do you know who his real name is? Yeah, uh, sorry? Do you know who his real name is? Yeah, Gordon Sumner. Very good. Yes, that's right. Well done. Now, in the 1980s, uh, Newcastle was a forlorn club. Um, you know, Sir John, what's his name, who built the Metro Centre, had not taken over then, and the club... Sir John, what's his name? Then? Yeah. Well, Hall. Hall, John Hall, that's yeah. the man. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they had, a, they had a knackered, broken down old ground. They, you know, they were struggling like mad. And um, and a group of fans uh, approached Sting, allegedly, yeah. and asked him if he would uh, do a free concert on Tyneside to start raising money to buy players. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, he'd, uh, he'd been, 
uh, you know, doing some work with Jimmy Nail and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, he refused the request to stage a concert at James Park to raise funds to buy a player fund when the club is in financial trouble, although now he, uh, he is uh, adding his um, criticism to the current Newcastle regime. He's my second loser, OK? And why is he a loser? Well, because he won't help out because Newcastle he United. Oh, yeah, okay. he won't help Newcastle United. So he's loser in the eyes of the um, of the other people. Okay. Now, my third loser is a guy called Pierre Jambon. Okay. Pierre Jambon. Pierre Jambon. Pierre Ham, literally. Yeah, Pierre Ham. That's is right. Uh, probably lead ham, yes, absolutely. But that's a complete coincidence. His name is Pierre Jambon. Really? But he you tell li- me you don't go around searching for Jambon on the on no, the old internet. No, no. He lives in Clermont Ferrand, which or he did live in Clermont Ferrand, which is in France, okay? Uh-huh. Okay. And in that town there's a bar called Le Starter Bar. Oh yeah. It's it, it's known as Le Starter Bar, mm-hmm. okay? And he went in there on um, Thursday of last week to break the record for the number of drinks you can drink in one session. Right. And it was 55 was the record. 55 what sort of individual shots. drinks? Shots. 55 shots? 55 shots, that yeah. That sounds dangerous. Yeah, 55 shots. And he went in there to break it, and, the, and it was held by a, a much younger man than him mm. um, because old uh, old uh, Pierre is, uh, is like, in his early 50s. Right. Anyway, um, Pierre won it with 56 shots, OK? Right. Including thirty shots in less than one minute. That's which, that's, that's, that's a way to which, kill yourself. Which you under the bar. Well, I was about to say to you the reason why he's in my losers list is he went home and he died of a cardiac arrest. <laughs> I'm um, not surprised. Uh, ten minutes after getting home. Well, nobody should should drink that much exactly. that quickly. That is idiotic. Exactly. Yeah. So they're my losers and all powerful. I would say. Yeah, I'm not really keen. Uh, well, on any I of don't those. care whether you're keen or not because you're not the judge. Yeah. The the uh, the audience are. Well, here's my list of three losers. Right. right? First one's uh, Watford. Because Watford had uh, all they're sorts of... They're winners. No, they're not. They had all sorts of celebrations, right? Because mm. they won the league, or so they thought. Yeah. The champagne corks being popped all over the place mm. on the pitch. The mm. players pouring champagne over each other. Yes. And imagine how embarrassed they would then be when a few days later it turned out that Bournemouth have actually won the league and they've come second. Well, it doesn't matter. They're still winners because they've got up no. into the Premier League. No, they've had to go oh, through that's a ridiculous the embarrassment one. of having to, you know, roll back all of them. I mean, they'll have to that... put a champagne back on ice. You know, no, they, can't, no. they can't celebrate they still as winners. Had a, they still had a, a, a winner's parade today. Well, they shouldn't have had. Well, they did have. They, they did, did have. Because they, they, should have, they, should have, they should have had well, a winner's up parade. They should have had a, pro, you know, promoted to the uh, uh, you well, know, Premier League well, but they did not win it. And well, so, you know, they've jumped before uh, they were ready to jump. Ludicrous. Ludicrous. That's a big mistake. Second loser Ludicrous of the week losers, is, that. is John Carver, right? Not because uh, of the well, obvious that's, reason. That's very, very not, obvious, not, isn't it? No, they, the, no. They, the, the reason we all know that. Well, no. The reason he's a loser mm. uh, is because he's still got the job. Yeah. Because you know he was willing to throw himself uh, on the mercy of the court, as it were. Yes. He doesn't really can't be enjoying it. He can't be having a good time. He wanted them to fire him, and because they didn't fire him, and he has to stick with them. Yeah. That is a yeah. worse position to yeah. be, I think, than anything I've ever I've ever imagined. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry, okay. If, I, if I'm taking up too much no, of no, time. No, 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 now, no, no. The no. third loser to yes. me, and this is the one that will clinch it for me. Mm. Russell Brand. Yes. Russell Brand, the man who's been telling everyone not to vote for months and months and months and months, then suddenly pops up uh, with uh, uh, an idea that you should vote for the uh, Green Party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Now uh, Mm. has decided, actually, that's not good enough. Now you should vote for Labour instead. Right. So this is a guy who has gone from, uh, you know, the whole process is a joke. Yes. It's appearing on Question Time and saying that he wouldn't want to be an MP because he'd be just as useless as everybody else. Now he's saying completely the reverse of what he was saying all year. And I think this will be the massive winner for losers. Well, I think think he's he's a very odd uh, individual, that chap. But, uh, yes, uh, well... uh, uh, I'm not not bad. The last You've got to say that is the best one, isn't it? No, no, it's not. No, no, no. Well, we'll let the uh, my, audience my decide. Guy, my guy, Pierre Jambon, who drank himself to death by trying to get the record. For by the way, shots. by the way, I've mm. got a note from a mm. guy on Twitter over the weekend. Oh, yeah. Who said, "Have you noticed how many of Mike Perry's former colleagues have drunk themselves to death?" A lot of them have. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "I should be worried." Because uh, obviously well, my association with you could lead to that very same problem. Well, hang on, hang on, mate. I don't need to give you much encouragement when you drink one bottle of white, one bottle of red, one bottle of rosé and half a bottle of whiskey in an overnight session on Saturday. Now, I've you done... don't need any help from me to drink yourself yeah, to death, You're pal. just going to keep going on about that. Mm. Uh, now, uh, so far the result is four retweets for Mr Parry, yes. five favourites for me, so I'm winning at the moment. Uh, by um, one, but, I'll uh, soon disappear. Let's now have the winners. Right. 
I suppose I should, shouldn't I? No, you go first, because I want, went first on the losers. You want me to go first? Yes. OK, all right, well, hang yes. on, I've got to find my list now. <laughs> you see, you see? Now, uh, Must I've, have got, been struggling. I've got Blackpool fans as winners, because right. uh, not only uh, have they Ooh. shown their displeasure at what's going on at their club, yes. um, and I wouldn't normally back uh, sort of direct action quite as much as they did. Yeah. However, they didn't get involved with anybody in a bad way. The police were quite complimentary about the way they conducted on, They were trying themselves. to break into the director's no, box to no, beat up a few directors. No, no that's not true. The police well, said... Is true. Then. No, well, what is true is that they had a, a pretty big demonstration. And the guy was trying to get in the director's box. Yeah, they were, but there was no uh, nobody who was arrested. Well, do you think he was going in there to well, ask was... him for a recipe well, for... I, I don't know why you've suddenly you know, turned against Blackpool fans. Stotty cake or something. Well, I don't know why you've mm. turned against Blackpool no, fans. No, I haven't turned against them. But you, you're, you're making allegations which are not true. The police said it was all very peaceful. Mm. The police mm. said that they didn't have to arrest anybody. And right. so I, I take my hat off to them for that. But the main reason I've got them as winners mm. is because, you know, Blackpool have hardly won any games at all this season, right? right? They were drawing nil nil mm. with Huddersfield. Mm. They got the match abandoned. Now, it may well be that when the, uh, the, the, the inquiry into this game takes place, mm. that they end up with a point. Now, that would be one of the most this valuable very long points. Long-winded. No, very it's long winded. That would be one of the most valuable points no. that they've ever got. That's very maybe, would and, be, and, could be. And so, therefore, I think the Don't fans, think the that. fans, not the team, are winners. The second winner yeah. uh, of the week is John Terry. Right. You know, Chelsea, of course, have become uh, league champions yes. once again. Yeah. John Terry made uh, what was a very obvious um, sort of remark about Rafa Benitez, mm. saying, you know, here's a, there was only one man who thought that I couldn't play in every game. He's played mm. in every game of the season. Yeah. I think he's scored in every season that he's played for Chelsea. He has. He's lifted his fourth Premier League title. Seasons. And to be honest, I can't imagine a more uh, perfect winner, really. Well, I voted for him in the uh, Football of the Year. So you say? Yes. yes. So are you impressed with that one? Um, well, it's very obvious. Very, very obvious. obvious. Who's your third one? All right, my third one, you'll like mm. this one. This is mm. George Clooney. George, George Clooney. Clooney is a winner this week. because, but his, not... w- but his wife seems to be getting thinner, so how is he a winner? Well, no, well, he's got a very beautiful wife. Yeah, right? but she's getting thinner. Well, so what do you mean she's getting thinner? All the reports today show that she's losing weight since well, she got married and her cheeks are a bit hollow and she's, uh, well, she's starting cheeks, to look um, thin. Her cheeks are not hollow. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's his birthday coming up, right? Right. And do you know what she's going to buy him for his birthday? Uh, no. If he's going to buy her a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Yeah. Which retails around about £135,000. It's flash, isn't it? Uh, yeah. He's only just come off the production line, right? Yeah. He's already got a red um, uh, a red and white Chevrolet mm. Corvette, mm. but he's going to get this uh, amazing car. How does that make him a winner? Well, wouldn't you like somebody to buy a Porsche for your birthday? Well, not if he's a multimillionaire. He'd expect it anyway, and it is his wife, and it's just like a belated you wedding present. You miserable son, No, I'm so, sorry. I don't see that as a, as a winning uh, aspect of his character in any form or fashion. No, I, well, she's gone to the trouble of getting the latest model off the production line. It's one of the first cars like this that you'll ever see. Right. It certainly beats your um, crappy Mercedes into a cocked hat. Oh, really? And those are my and those are my three winners, and I can't imagine you'd have anything better than that. I, I have got three better than that, right? right first of all, Diego Maradona, because oh, yeah. he's attacked a black... Right, has and he? so and so, considering he has so much influence, particularly in South American football, mm. well, in massive, Argentinian football, anyway. Uh, well, certainly Argentinian, but in South American, and, and in fact, in world football, yeah. it's it's great that he's come out and attacked uh, Sepp Blatter, who he says runs a quote corrupt organisation. That's what he says. Well, okay? he's a bit late, isn't he? Yeah, well, Everybody it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's, he, he's going to him. My second um, winner, and this is posthumously, yeah. is a guy called Keith Sivia. So you, this is your second guy that you're nominating who's actually dead. Yeah, I'm dead. sorry, he's dead, yeah. yeah. Well, you had one of the losers who was dead as yeah, well. Yeah, no, yeah, well, that doesn't matter. I think they should be recognised for their greatness or their poorness in their death. Really? Um, and what happened to him is, since the um, pop chart started in 1952... Mm. He bought every single record that ever appeared in the UK British charts, right? Every single every one? Every single record. Well, how many did he buy? Um, altogether, 45,000 discs. Blimey. And he stashed them all at his home. Uh, he was 75 when he died in February. His brother... He died you know, in February? In February. His, his, well, how is this anything re- relevant to this week? Because this week, his brother actually dealt with his estate, mm. went to his house for the first time in years, right. went in and found no. all these racks and racks and racks of records and looked at his right. collection book and found that he bought every single record that um, that was ever... Uh, appeared in the in the British charts from 1952 mm. until the time of his death. That's an amazing That's rubbish. achievement. That's rubbish. complete rubbish. No, it's not. It's great. It's a great one, that. You no, know, you know, anybody else in the world who's got a record collection like that? Well, he hasn't got that it, has he? Because he's not alive anymore. No, well, somebody else will inherit it, won't they? It'll be, it'll be the most historic no, he'll sell it off, collection of records Maybe ever. Maybe you should buy it. But the third and the overall winner, and I beg the audience now to go with me on this one. Please, please, please. It's, it's very so important. It's so embarrassing when you no, beg for popularity. No, no I'm, not, I'm not begging for popularity. 
popular, I'd say I'm begging for recognition. See the, see the time, for recognition by the way. for this person. And it is, of course, Jimmy Greaves. Yes. One of the greatest footballers ever produced in this country. A man who missed out on the World Cup final, but still managed to uh, dazzle and, and, and entertain us all over a number of years. Not the only reason why he's the big winner, but because he was such a great footballer, but a man who beat alcoholism and warded it off for nearly 50 years. You know, he knew that he had a problem, so he said, I'm not having a drink tomorrow, I'm not going to drink tomorrow, I'm not drinking tomorrow. He kept that going for 50 years. That's the, that is the remarkable uh, record of a true winner. That is... A- very, very strange choice. I can't say no, I go along not. with that. No, it's not. It's a correct choice. It's not up to me. It's the uh, correct choice. It the audience, I want you, please, remember, retweet if you agree with me. Mine are the best choices. Uh, don't go Listen with... Listen how uh, desperate you are to win. Don't go with old Fuzzy Bonds here, because, honestly... It's, Who? It, 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 you. Because it was all so... Because uh, you should get your hair cut again. It's getting all out of shape again. No, I'm, and, get, I'm and, trying to grow it long for the live shows. Oh, right, OK. People like it long. OK, good idea. And uh, I, I, I would... Uh, I would uh, uh, commend my choices to the House. What do you think you are? Some kind of MP here? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Absolutely mm. ridiculous. Mm. So self-important is Mr Parry mm. uh, that he thinks that he can commend his uh, ideas to you. Yes. So far, it's 24 retweets to 19 favourites, so at the moment you're edging it. I'm edging slightly. it! Whee! Look how happy he is. Uh, yep. But we'll bring you the full result, of course. Uh, I won't be giving you the total uh, until I win. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> Sport Extra Time with the two mics. Yep. He's Mike Parry, yep. I'm Mike Graham. Let's take a little time uh, coming back from that, that yes. because I was just finishing off that bit of chocolate from the... Uh, yeah, you started munching the chocolate well, now. Since it's not going to melt, I thought we might eat it. Well, it, might, it would have melted if you left it there long enough, but, no, of course, you ruin the experiment by saying, oh, you know, my fuck gob needs some chocolate, and you stuff it all down your throat. Well, uh, you know... You're a bit of a disgrace. Just needed a bit more... Uh, uh, it's 31 to 28. Very close. It's the closest one yet. So Sorry, far. 31 in my favour. So your fa- to in your my favour. Yeah. Thank Keep voting, kids, please. Remember, retweet. Kids. Kids. Retweet Kids. for my uh, choices. Jimmy Greaves, the biggest winner of all time. Great footballer, England international, but a man who beat alcoholism as well in a most spectacular way. Good for him. We know many people who tried to beat alcoholism but didn't. And Mike Most Graham, of them were friends of yours, weren't Mike, they? Mike Graham had a bottle of white, a bottle Why of red... Why do you keep red, going on about that? A bottle of rosé and half going on a about bottle it? of whiskey overnight on Saturday. Why do you keep going on about that? Because people need so reminding happy, of your disgraceful... You're so uh, happy. Projection. Not, nocturnal Projection habits. is your only... Th- your only no. uh, advisor. Now, well, let's talk about Benny King. Yes, that was Stand By yeah. Me, of course. Yeah, that's he right. got himself into more trouble with real music well, fans well, look, look, over the weekend. Benny King died. That was one of the greatest pop songs of all time, in yeah. my view, right? And all I did was tweet out and say, oh, really sorry to hear Benny King died. You know, Stand By Me, yeah. a magical record. And then I put Made Even Better when it was covered by John Lennon. Which was a very, very good version, I'd have to agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Now, all of a sudden, I get all the Benny King mob saying, how dare you denigrate him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the John Lennon alert. That's the John Lennon alert. Yeah. Well, OK, the artist whose name we never mention, yeah, all right? exactly. But the problem is, the problem is also, oh, dear, you backhanded compliment, you know, and But you did say, and this is mm. one of the reasons mm. that you got into trouble, yeah. that he only, he only did one song. Well, and he of did. of course, Benny King did a lot more songs. He played with the Drifters, for heaven's sake. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is he was famous for one song, wasn't he? Well, so he was probably famous yeah, for more than yeah, one song. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his obituary in the Times. OK. Benny King, soul singer, who took an old gospel hymn and turned it into an enduring pop classic, Stand By Me. Yeah. That's what he's famous for, right? Well, that's what he's most famous for. Of course for. he is, yeah. But he also did lots of other yeah. songs. But anyway, anyway, so all these people then start jumping on my back, I yeah. mean, really, and saying, you know, dare you, you know, disgusting that, you know, you've insulted... I didn't insult anybody. I didn't insult anybody. What I, what I was trying to make out was that if John Lennon, who was the greatest singer song Songwriter of the second half of the 20th You've said it century. Again, the man, we do not yeah, know. Yeah, OK, 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 fine. Right, right. Um, if, uh, OK, if the man whose name we dare not mention. Yeah. The greatest. <laughs> what, no, what do you I can't do? believe we just go along uh, with it. Yeah, OK, OK, OK. Uh, who, who, um, who was the greatest singer songwriter of, twen- of the second half of the 20th century? Yes. If he covers one of your songs, yeah. that is a massive compliment to who you are and what your song was but all if about. If you were able to ask John Lennon why he did it, yes. he would probably tell you that Benny King actually. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. sorry, I've yeah. got it now. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's not the same when I do it, because I don't do yeah. it every single show. Exactly. Um, he would have mm. said that Benny King was, was, one of the, uh, was one of the reasons why he probably got into rock and roll, because he was so inspired by people like no, Benny wasn't. King. he was inspired by Benny. He was inspired by Buddy Holly and people like that. Yeah, but Benny King as well. Well, Benny King maybe, but what I'm saying is, for John to saying? cover anybody's... Uh, <laughs> oh, there it goes again. <laughs> 
to uh, the former Beatle, for the former Beatle yes. to uh, to cover anybody's song was an extreme compliment. And so what I was saying to the Benny King fans who, who then started berating me and sending me insulting tweets, excuse me, and all that kind of thing, yeah. is that, no, it made Benny King a much, much better artist, a more famous artist, rubbish. a more revered Absolute artist, rubbish. a more respected singer, because the former Beatle actually took his song, covered it, but with his unique genius... His own inimitable style. His own inimitable style, his unique genius, he made it even better. That's all I was saying. Yeah, all right. That's all I was saying. Well, you may be right That's all I said. That's all I said. what I recommend for you to buy Mm. is Benny King's Greatest Hits, because you know how you've got a great collection of Greatest Hits albums. indeed. In fact, I was looking through through, through a few the other day. Do you know whose I've got, which I didn't realise? The Hollies. You've got the Hollies Greatest Hits. Hollies Greatest Hits. They wrote some good stuff. They did. Well, why don't you get Benny King's Greatest Hits? Came out in 1964 which was pretty much at the beginning of the Beatles' career. So he already had a Greatest Hits album before the Beatles okay. had even got and, going. And, and name two or three of his Greatest Hits without looking Spanish at your... Harlem. Without looking at your... Young uh, Boy Blues. Machine. Seven letters. Well, he didn't, he didn't write... The or, beginning of it all. He didn't write, and he wasn't the original singer of Spanish Harlem. Save the last dance for me. There is a road in Spanish Harlem... <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I've got some bad news for you. Oh, you've got bad news for me. I've got a feeling we're going to have to dump the uh, the voting process because it's been tampered with. Why? Uh, somebody's voted twice. Because I'm in the lead, you mean? No, no, not at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, somebody's voted, they've favourited and they've retweeted. Right. This guy, uh, CJ... How do you know says, that? ...because he's tweeted me to say, I did both, is that OK? No, it's not, it's OK. not OK. No, that completely it's ruins it. It's not OK. So I think we might have to declare it null and void. We can't have that. We have to declare it null and void. Um, anyway, look, so so Celtic fans give me stick over the weekend on Twitter, right? Yeah. Only because I said, look, you know, congrats. I did congratulate them and all that. I said, mm. but, you know, for, why do you get involved in these things, though? I'm because trying to be you helpful. Know, I'm trying you to be know helpful. very well that if you mm. start tweeting mm. about Celtic, yeah. that you were going to get a pile of abuse, well, I don't, no matter what you tweet about. I see, one of these days we might have to go to Glasgow and mm. stand on the stage and do yeah, our, we are. our two minutes. So you should show. be very careful because I, I'm, be. I'm very much mm. revered in Scotland, right? Because I don't mistreat the Scots. Oh, I don't make revered. snide comments about them. I don't come Well, we're going near to Scotland soon. We'll be able to announce before the end of the week the exact time. Date and Newcastle. location of our Newcastle concert man. Right, it's at the Tyne. Well, they need somebody to take their mind theater. off the football. Tyne, they? Yeah, they do. Tyne Theatre and Opera House. Well, I tell you what, we'll probably have a few jokes about Newcastle by the time we mm. get there. Are you going to be performing some songs then? Eh? Uh, may do. You know, uh, fucking a tain is all mine, all mine. I don't really fucking think a tain do is that. all mine. I like I like the old uh, bleeding races mm. and all the lads and lasses there and all the smiling why faces. Why are you now singing? A gun in a down the Scotswood Road. To see the blading races. Oh, for see? Heaven's sake. That's pretty good, isn't it? Now, May Day Bank Holiday, yeah. um, you suggested that I should do the traditional dancing around the maypole. That's I right. did have a word with the kids, they didn't want to do that. But right. I'll tell you what, well, you might remember this from last year, because right. I'm sure we spoke about it last year mm. on this show. I'd completely forgotten that one of the things that they do on May Day Bank Holiday is all these bikers come down to Hastings on oh, the day 21. No. And there are literally thousands of them, right? Well, only like Thousands it. of. Th- no, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about motorbikes. Oh, right, not okay. Push bikes. Greasers. Push- Push push bikes are not bikers. No, are no, they? no, no, no. Greasers are they? Well, no, they're not greasers. No, they? they're well, motorcycle people. Well, hang on. In my I call day, them bikers. It was, it was mods and rockers. Well, it may have been. And the rockers were the greasers, and the mods yeah, were the like so the side heads. No. No, they, they, they're, they're, I'm going to call them bikers. I think okay. that covers the okay, whole... that's fair But, uh, you know, there was police all up mm-hmm. and down the road. The roads yep. were terrible, you know. Shocking. It took me, like, twice as long to get to London uh, as it normally does. Shocking. And it wasn't even very nice weather for them, either. No, no, it wasn't, no, no. Well, I don't know why they do these things. Um, I found out some other research over the weekend which oh, yeah. can explain, uh, to a large extent, your difficulty in ever... Uh, applying yourself to a relationship in any form of long-term solidarity. Well, completely unlike you. Uh, well, you having a, a relationship uh, uh, that lasted more than about ten minutes. Yes, but I don't go around having relationships with women, procreating children, and abandoning them all over the globe. You know, Neither I know do I. I know my responsibilities. Neither do I. Now then, uh, do you realise that your interest in your partner disappears, starts disappearing after just one year of marriage? Um, I could have told you that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're probably good. <laughs> no, well, I, no, I think me. in your case, it's after about one day. No, I think it was actually before we got married. Yeah, yeah before you got married, yeah. that's right, yeah. The seven-year itch, make that 12 months. Men's testosterone falls after the first anniversary. For years, the test of a relationship was that it had to survive the seven-year itch. Now, it appears the turning point is the first anniversary. It's then that a man's testosterone level, mm. key to his sex drive, drops dramatically. It's been found out through research 
That um, What's, uh, which, which publication is this one in then? This this is from this is a record, world record. You wrote five different publications. It's from a journal called Evolutionary Psychology. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Because it's evolutionary ludicrous. psychology. The idea that you read all this clap trap, right, I do, without I do, even no, understanding it. No, I do, I do. I have to find evolutionary out. psychology. It is evolutionary. Unbelievable. I have, to, I have to make the world. I have to make sense of the world. Yeah. And uh, and, it's, and not, it's not going too well, is it? And it goes back. It goes back to caveman days, like a lot of these things do. The uh, first year, a man is poised to fight off competition from rivals. Oh, yeah. so in those days, cavemen used to go around nicking each other's wives. You cavemen. know what I mean? Well, well, you know, well, well, caveman one was out slaying a, um, you know, a, a beast or two. What do you, what do you call them? Mammoths. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, slaying a mammoth. <laughs> Caveman too would sneak into the cave and uh, and get his wicked way. In. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes they would probably set the mammoth on a on a on a kind of a you know a, yeah. a wild goose chase to try and distract them. Yeah, maybe. It's forty four to thirty nine at the moment. I'm not in sure. In my favour. Yeah, it is. In yeah. my favour. Yeah, I think yeah, we're going to have yeah, to null and yeah. void it though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's also um, it's also backed up by. The University of Worcester's Health and uh, Institute of Health and no, um, very happy and Society. Very happy about that. Which has done all the research here. You know, I didn't mm. even know Worcester had a university. Well, Worcester used to have a technical college. Well, it's a bit like University of the Trent, isn't it? Well, not really. I mean, it's, Trent, everything's now university. Ooh. If you drive up the Holloway Road, yes. what used to be North London Poly is now the University of North London. Yes, it's it a is. joke. Yeah, it's yeah. like the University of the Trent. It's, it's very close to uh, the Emirates Ground, isn't it? Is. it that one absolutely. In, yeah. fact, in fact, it's bang smack between the Emirates and the old. Uh, and the old stadium. old hybrid stadium, yeah. You're absolutely right, OK. Mm. So you need to know about that, Mike, because these things are important for you well, to try and understand why know. you are incapable of committing yourself no, to a... That's not true. Monamo- monogamous, monogamous Mono- relationship. Monogamous? You can't even say it, can I you? I can, monogamous relationship. Monogamous. Monogamous, M. Monogamous, monogamous. No, but the point about uh, the mm. why why that is the case now is that yeah. people are no longer meeting and getting married mm. like you know before they know each other for many many years. So the fact is, generally speaking, people mm. will live together for probably at least five or six or maybe even seven years before they yeah. even contemplate actually getting hitched. So by the time they're getting married. Mm. They might have already gone off each other. I think old-fashioned marriage and decency and commitment and monogamy is what a good mean? thing. Well, as you, and, as you practice with so many married women, you uh, mean? No, is that what no, you mean? No, 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 no. That's no. what you're talking about, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. I know my responsibilities to uh, other uh, classes in society and all this kind of stuff. Well, Don't now that you've it. declared yourself mm. to be the mm. middle-class man of the people... Yeah, I think I am. You know, I think I, think, I am. I think that's amazing. Now, coming up tomorrow... What's course, amazing about it? Well, because one, what's, what's you can't wrong with be aspiring to be middle class. Well, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's, because you're such a snob, no. you want to be middle class, yeah. desperately trying to be middle class, but oh. you think being middle class is about having a Mercedes, mm. you know, owning your own home, you know, being able to go to a well, Toby Carvery well, and not that, be worried about the bill coming. Well, that All is middle class. Things. That is middle class. Yeah, but why do you want to be that? Because I feel more comfortable in my own skin living life in that sort of so way. So what you're saying, you don't feel comfortable with working class people, is that what you're telling me? No, no, I feel very comfortable with working class well, people. Well, no, you don't want to be one anymore. No, I do. Yeah, and you've given well, it up. I get up and go to work every day. Every that day. That doesn't make you working class. It does. Because if you work, you're working class. It's as simple as that. Well, you know, Prince Charles gets up. You play football, up. you're a footballer. Prince Charles gets up If you up go to work, work, you're working class. Well, Prince Charles gets up and goes to work every day. It doesn't make him working class, does it? Well, he's aristocracy. And that's different. But he still gets up to work every day. The aristocracy at work are still the aristocracy. All right, now what are we having a quiz on? The working man at work is the working class. What are we having a quiz on this week? Well, I haven't decided yet. I haven't quite decided. Some people have suggested the royal family since it's a royal Royal sort of week. Royal family, royal family. I'll think about that one, I'll think about that one. All right, well, we'll have to decide, you know, by... What are you laughing at again? Foie gras. 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 If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport.